Give me the horse noise. Adi, 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 adi. <laughs> Yeah. Hi everyone! Hello! Happy holidays, guys! Happy I wore a holidays. cute holiday shirt for you. Happy the, holidays! The couple thousand people who enjoy the YouTube channel will <laughs> see that. The rest of you prefer not to see us. Which Shameful. lesson? Message received. <laughs> you don't like Bianca's head. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I mean, oh, you know what I wanted to talk about that hmm. uh, I forgot to last week. But. Um, I I'm a hoarder. Yeah, we know that. But what I real now, what the, I was hoarding things because I just didn't know. I just didn't want to put them in the landfill. And um, but what I realized is, if you go, if you live in LA, and I'm sure they have it in every or not every city, but you know the good ones. There is a program where you there's a there's like a day. Well, th in LA, it's Friday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, some combination. Okay. Of uh, or sometimes it's Monday, no. Wednesday, and then the <laughs> the stuck, Tuesday before, um, where you can drop off paint, mm -hmm. solvent, anything in that family. In that, like, what the fuck do I do with this family? There's another one for e waste, which is cords. I'm gonna have a big weekend with that one. I got e waste e 2020. Yeah, that's an Eric Andre uh, <laughs> e waste. Um, and um, and so I got rid of paint, I got rid of a ton of shit. Mm. In there's a closet, whatever it's a long story, but I'm I got I Tell emptied us. out the closet. <laughs> Tell us about I, your do closet. you guys have two and a half hours? <laughs> um, I emptied out the closet, the one main closet I have. I got mm. rid of all the paint and shit I've, that's been in there for 10 years. And then I'm Is that the one gonna, below the staircase? Yes. The people under the stairs? No, that one. Oh, we don't hands go off. in there. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of, it's at the front. Anyhow, so I empty that out and now I'm going to slowly migrate shit from the table mm. into that whilst just, getting rid of cords. Should we cords. get rid of shit from the table? Yeah, I'll get rid of okay. some of it. But now I know, I have so many cords. Because you know so I buy dumb cords. shit and every piece of dumb so shit comes with two two different <laughs> cords. Um two different dumb cords on the front of mm. it. Just says now with two different dumb cords. So I'll get rid of so it things are changing out here at Neil Brennan Inc. And secondly, I got a label maker, because what wow. what dumber thing wow. can you, a person get? get? A thigh master. Yes, I got a label maker. Um, um should be shorter. <laughs> um, still can be shorter. Um, I know, but I'm saying <laughs> we have just to wait. get to the we meat to of the what it <laughs> is. <laughs> booty. Like, why make people wait? Um, I got a label maker and I got some sticky magnets. Anyhow, I have a way that I do my set list now mm. where it's by, it's on a ma whiteboard magnet. I saw that. Pretty great. Uh, you know, you can also just get that stuff picked up. You don't have to go drop off. Yeah. Uh, yes. Not during COVID though. Okay. But normally, I mean, it can be for animal, dead animals. If your animal dies, they'll do it. Keith, shout out Keith. to Keith. Keith, give me that number. Make a big Cause he's been wheezing. Box, Keith. Keith has been box. wheezing lately. Can I tell you something? Go. The fact that Keith doesn't come down and greet me, I'm worried about his health. He didn't want, he went to the steps. Yeah, then, but then I was uh, here at the steps and he did a half paw, half paw. He was scared. Because he gets scared of the steps sometimes. Okay. For no reason. Is his health okay? Yeah, he just sometimes he gets scared. Of, I made a video You're about saying it. saying he's he weak. can't go, I was kidding. Oh, I was um, like, no. He's kidding and he, he's in a, it seems like he's in a lot of pain. <laughs> I'm just going to let it play out. Um, <laughs> there you go. Whoa. There you go. Um, the horror. Well, about getting that worse. About getting that worse. <laughs> Four minutes in, three zero oh for three. Um, so things are happening. Things are shifting, and um, it's pretty exciting. Where I'm from in the Bay Area, in Santa Clara County, mm -hmm. they do two days a year, and it's called like a spring cleaning, mm -hmm. and they'll take anything. Everybody furniture beds yeah. everything so when that day happens it's like a weekend 
Oh my God. There's so many people. It's like a free garage sale, essentially. Because people and, give nice shit. Yeah. It's not it's not like Do always people gross. Pu- probably social media like, hey, I actually have good shit. No, I don't know about that, but it just everyone knows about it. So there's so many people like just rummaging through the streets for like a week. Have you have you dumpster dove? Did I you, haven't, but a friend of mine got a whole couch. A whole ass a, a whole, whole ass, ass couch, couch. A grown ass couch. And it was so uncomfortable. I was like, what is she? It was antique. So she's like, we got it. It's nothing better than an old couch. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, a couch with history. Forget it. It's good. You know, a couch so that tells bets. a story. That's so what you bets. want from your couch <laughs> um, is to tell a story. I, my couch that I is the wrong couch for this space. Um, it it looks dumpy. It, yeah, it with does, my, it's lost its, it's form. Too, it's low and it's too smushy. Too smushy. And between the clutter and yeah. Keith, what Keith does to the blankets. Yeah. It looks it sad. Does, it, it looks, looks sad. bad. Divorced. And it was so expensive. Really? Yes. Did you get it from Article? I got it from uh, the other one. Mm. Uh, Restoration Hardware. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a premium. Yeah. And I got the discount and it was still like, oh. It's in, they, they were too expensive. Somebody, here's a, here's a rich a person rip-off. story. Do we have a rich person? This <laughs> isn't even trouble in the VIP. <laughs> By the way, it to get it dry rich cleaned. Person. We need a song for to rich get it dry story. cleaned. This is called rich people problems. Rich people problems. To get it dry cleaned cost for the duvet for like the cover was seven hundred dollars. Wow! Just um, to clean. I was once complaining about this to, let's call her Portia de Rossi, and I was, uh, uh, which actually sounds like a fake name. Of it somebody, does. I was speaking to a friend of mine, Portia de Ross. It's like an Austin Powers, and this is my associate Oprah. Um, Austin Powers, so goddamn funny, and people don't understand how funny it is. Everyone, understands. everybody understands, but what it's even about? funny. It's he's making fun of Antonioni's fucking blow up. He's making fun of shit that you been whatever. I said, "How much do you think the, the the couch was?" And Porsche goes, "I don't know, fourteen grand." I was like, "Fourteen grand? Fucking fourteen fuck? grand!" But that's the world they live in. They, yeah, they 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 pay fourteen thousand dollars for a couch. Never. From my have they ever been hands. here? No. <laughs> I was gonna say. No, I was like their I was like their scrackly nephew. Um, I was. Hey guys. So, no, I mean, I would say shit. I called Ellen. The white Steve Harvey one time. Yeah, that's good. It's the fucking best. It, the, the people don't talk to it like that. Anyhow, how how's your week been, hon? <laughs> good. Okay. I just don't fucking remember. I just write it. You can write it down. That's I all know. I'm, I'm just. I I just. Uh, you black out. I do. I really blank out about what I did. It's very. It's weird, and I only notice it when you ask me. I'm like, fuck. Well, it's hard to remember what what is happening because we're not doing anything, so it's just different shades. COVID is so weird. Different to, shades of gray. Different fifty, maybe, mm. maybe fifty. Mm. <laughs> mm, have you been tied up? <laughs> um, uh, hey, well, well, don't yell at me. Speaking of yelling at you, mm. Will, play. I think this is a trouble in the winter circle. This is a little trouble. Yeah. Trouble. Um, Tom Cruise, I believe, expressed all of our feelings mm. toward Loved it. anti-maskers. Loved it. Um, the, this wasn't even an anti-mask situation, but it's... We don't know what There's this doing. thing where there's people don't want to bother. Do we know what the guy was doing? Uh, apparently, there were two guys unmasked on the set looking at a monitor or something um and he saw them and fucking flipped here are some of the um highlights here's some of the highlights we are the gold standard they're back there in hollywood making movies right now because of us because they believe in us and what we're doing I'm on the phone with every fucking studio at night, insurance companies, producers, and they're looking at us and using us to make their movies. We are creating thousands of jobs, you <laughs> motherfuckers. By the way, that's how you feel yeah. when you're in charge of anything. Yeah. 
It's, it's just, just like, like you fucking you bitch, ungrateful. I love you. Yes. <laughs> it's like you ungrateful motherfucker. I'm fucking trying. Yeah. That's how uh, it's a it's a it's a, a, a completely unsympathetic position to be Tom Cruise in yes. any pretty much any situation. People are going to side with you because you're a movie star, but the, in the back of their head, you're like, this fucking guy's got a billion dollars and he, and he's a Scientologist. Yeah. So like, it's like it, uh, he has no, he's going to lose a ton of arguments, but for the sake of, this is what my inner monologue sounds like. Not often. Just at my when worst, it's with Will. <laughs> like with Will, like I'll say things like, Will, you know, I pay you shit like that. <laughs> Uh, when you ask for some, you ask for very little and you get less than that. When you're saying like, Hey, there's a worldwide pandemic We're we've already been shut down. Right. His movie had already been shut down once yeah. and we cannot get shut down again. And I'm, I'm sure, I mean, he's a producer, so he's got a lot of liability and it would, people think it's like, well, he should have handled it a different way. How Who? about if someone's no. doing a stunt without a harness? Right. Because that's what they're doing. They're basically like potentially putting multiple lives at risk. Right. Right. Because they just don't feel like it. And then you're allowed to yell, I guess. But even I saw like, I will. I don't think that there's this is the way to handle it. It's like. Uh -huh. No, please. Because everybody yeah. loses their temper. I get that he lost his temper. It's like he shelled out out of his own pocket. Um, he put everybody up in a place so they quarantined mm -hmm. on his dime. Mm -hmm. And then they started. But you know what the funny thing is? When I saw this whole thing, the only thing I could think of, and not a lot of people realize this, most people on cruise are Trump-supporting Midwesterners uh -huh. or uh -huh. East Coasters or yeah. Southerners. Mm -hmm. Most of them are white. Most mm -hmm. of them are older men. And mm -hmm. most of them have gotten they in from... They all have boats. And they have they boats. All boats. And they all have, they have speed boats or whatever, motor boats. And they have big pickup trucks. For They're their boats. all in unions. Yeah. It is hard to get and into that. And they wear shorts. Cargo shorts. All the cargo time. shorts. Yeah. Uh, so they, shorts and boots. Yeah. So it's like you don't really understand. Like I was not surprised about this. I wasn't surprised. I mean, I I I, I did a show last night, and it was like a via satellite. It was like Sarah Mello does a show that's, um you're like in a video environment okay. and I'd heard it was good and how'd you like it safe I I uh, like about four o'clock I was like I don't want to fucking do this show. <laughs> I like I was like I don't want to there's know, no so point funny. yeah in doing this show there's zero point and and Sarah's like they had they're gonna do a rapid test when you get there and I was like okay cool okay okay and I've heard it's a minimal crew and I get there. No, we don't. Not doing a rapid test. We'll take your temperature. Okay, but that wasn't the agreement. And then I go in, and there's, and there's, there's only four people in the room. Mm. But it just is like, well, ah, there's four, why there's do you need four? Yeah, why do I need this many? I haven't been. The only time I was inside with more than you two was on a on the Gatorade thing and I and I just was like you're paying me I like I'm I have to get hazard pay because yeah. I'm not I don't want to do they this. And they tested, no? Yeah, and I made them test the shit out of me and everybody re repeatedly. Right. And so the fact that you have that, that was that Cruise one you pro you you promoted the other day. That that like the video Yeah. show. Yeah. Um and the fact that Tom Cruise has to be in charge of it. <laughs> That they're, I mean, that like he has to keep an eye on people is fucking insane. And it speaks to how not, how everyone does this shit with a wink. Mm, of like, course. It's just like, yeah, 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 yeah we're yeah, safe. Yeah, yeah, come on. Come on, look at me. Um, Would you do that again? No. And and I told Mello, I was like, I, there was no, I just realized there was no point in me doing this. Yeah. It's, and I didn't like the set. I don't like a split second before I hear if there's a laugh or not. It's like a bunch. It was, it was a nightmare. It's funny because I've seen people do the, like, I'm standing in a video room, but I just don't. I've heard people, people like, this is the future. People told me it was good. And I'm I like, went, I was like, this is not good. Because I'd be <laughs> doing jokes and I'd be like, man, put that down. And it was just somebody's fucking open microphone. 
Like it was, it just sucked. <laughs> and it was far. It was just like it had nothing going for it. But I, Sarah Mello, I love, and she does my she, Santa Monica show. But fun, and I'm sure it's fun to watch. It's better than nothing. But it's not much better than nothing. Yeah, I'm um, like, mm, I like, watch, I watch you, your yeah. your honor. Yeah, you, you know, you got Netflix. So I mean, go on YouTube. <laughs> Um, Thanks, video. Yeah. So I also think those are going to go the way to the the way of the dodo immediately. Yeah, oh, there's there's no benefit to it. It's not good, and you feel weird standing in a. It's just fucking weird. It was like a night. It, I said it's good to be here in my nightmare. <laughs> it felt like a nightmare. Um, so uh, anyhow, funny. Tom Cruise, rest in power, King. Um, no, he's. Do you think this will affect him? I feel right. like people like affect it. him. He's already gotten. He's already. He beat fucking Scientology. Seriously. Do you know what I mean? Like he beat that rap. Yeah. He's that necessary a movie star that he he can be in a religion that kidnaps people. <laughs> and the David Miscavige's wife gone. Yeah, she's gone. somewhere in Sea Org. Shelly, we don't know where she is. She's, she's in Sea She's on the sea where she's she belongs. <laughs> Um, she Under loves the sea. the sea. She's no land lover. Um, but it's also like Hollywood's weird because what's his face? I don't like you. Mel oh, Gibson. Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. But you knew. Um, he, he said some weird shit and somehow still seems to be around. No. Yeah, he's. Ba- I mean, he's in the minor. He'll never get to the majors. But really, it, he. That one always baffles me. Like he's he's like he was in Daddy Two, da- Daddy da- whatever Daddy. fucking yeah. Daddy's Home Two, which I still don't understand because McKay and Farrell produced it, and I'm kind of like, what are you? So, huh? And the other mistake he made was he started allowing himself to look old in public. Um, yeah, none of these are big movies. Yeah. The Beaver was like that was the last one he had out. Uh, Expendables. Oh, that was a that's long Expendables time three. Um, again, yeah. So these yeah, are. Yeah, so like, he's not getting back. He's not getting. He ain't getting back. He ain't. He's not going to what not women getting, want. Yeah, he's not going to be on the f- cover of a. Uh, it's direct straight to video. Mm. Video on demand. Um, and, and, but the problem is like he, all of the photos of him, he just looks fucking homeless. Um, like he just allows himself to to look. He he needs to wear a tuxedo all the time. Yeah, otherwise he looks. <laughs> otherwise he just so looks. Sad. He looks like what he is, which is a virulent anti-Semite and racist. Um, so uh, yeah, he looks terrible. Yeah, you can never let them see you get old. He also, yeah, he looks Egyptian here. Uh, you know what? You're never let them see you look Egyptian. <laughs> uh, that's a uh, that's a truism. <laughs> I told Will Smith stop being great. In public, it's like stop. I don't. Why? Right. What benefit do I get from seeing you gray? Like the thing that where he was upside down, that Uncle Phil shit. Yeah. It's like fucking. So you don't mind if they get older? Just don't. Like, I don't need to see that. Actively... Don't remind me of death. No, you hate being reminded. Bianca, of death. when has anyone ever aged publicly and you've been like, you know what? I'm glad he did that. It's I don't want to see Kirk Douglas fucking slurring. Just keep it away. I don't want to see Johnny Carson get fat. Just go and disappear and johnny carson didn't let us see a good fat those goddamn paparazzi oh, damn paparazzis they're rude. he would have gotten away with it <laughs> but those kind of goddamn paparazzi went and found him on his uh double decker boat um wait uh, whatever so tom <laughs> cruise um uh was in the right about this he shouldn't kidnap people <laughs> and uh, but I will still see. <laughs> he kidnap people. I like what? Tom. Like <laughs> I've seen every Mission Impossible. Uh, they're not that great, but they're not bad. Here's well, that's they're the as thing. good as the uh, negotiator. Uh, no negotiator. It's not that as bad as you think. Is dude. not a good movie. It's good. Um, it's. it's I mean, it's fine. No one. Why? No one's gonna listen to me. But I'm saying. <laughs> uh. But what if you get in another? What if you lose another thousand followers on Twitter for, the for negotiator saying the negotiator's not good? <laughs> this racist ass motherfucker. <laughs> uh, yeah, the negotiator's not a good movie. It's so good. Um, the the um, Mission Impossible. Why do you Mission like Impossible? It? Because 
unlike the negotiator, it it has a lot of sets. It has Set? a lot of locations. A location. It's very glamorous. Negotiator is in, in a fucking house in, in 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 San Fernando Valley. So was Die Hard, the first one, and you know we were Die Hard. The first one is in Nakatomi Plaza. It's not in a house in the no, valley. No, I know, but it's in one location. But it's in floors. It's on different floors, different lighting schemes. He's in a vent mm -hmm. at one point. He has to run over glass. I remember roof. Yeah, they fucking some, maximize yeah. it. Um, take it from a guy who shot a whole movie in a fucking car dealership and realized <laughs> about a week into it, like, wait a minute, I'm, this I'm whole movie in a fucking car dealership? I'm in trouble. <laughs> um, uh, so, and it's glamorous and it's got better actors. Um, you didn't like Kevin Spacey in The Negotiator? No, I could something. I sent something about him. Oh, Sam's yeah. great, but yeah, he's you know, good Sam always it. does Sam. Oh. And um, and it has a lot. Uh, uh, the Mission Possible has a lot of plot twists. Yes. And the one that J.J. Abrams directed, I think the fifth the last one, one. No, it was like the fifth one. Uh, is one of the best looking movies of all time. Um, it's it's got number three. It's got uh, images, images. It's got the. It had a lens flare in pretty much every scene, and uh, they had that cool sequence through the through the propeller thingies. Mm -mm. Um, Phil Phil Hoppins, Phil Seymour Hoppins, fucking great in it. Uh, it had the the bridge scene where he runs. Uh, that one is a killer just scene. Fun to watch. All of there, them. Uh, eye candy. It's like the yeah. Jay, uh, I don't know who the DP was, but he they fucking killed it. The last and one was really good with Ding Rain. Learn London. Been in all of them. Oh, sorry, but that's just I just remember him the most. Um, it was Bing's in London. Not uh, Alec Baldwin's in it. That's he's Alec the Baldwin one that I was yeah. like, oh, all right, Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Um, Ving one time gave me a hilarious oh, Mission Impossible. Right. Uh, monologue where he told me what he made on every one. <laughs> did he do and good? And I asked him, uh, he did great. Okay. And that's when he's like, and that's all because of Tom, bro. I, I think I said on here, you know that Bing Rames is going to, he's one of the biggest gossips I've ever met. And you know it's going to be juicy because he starts by going, can I tell you something, bro? <laughs> and then. <laughs> Come on the show, and then he And then he drops dime on everyone. It's fucking great. And it's, yes. Thank you, Will. We're at, look. We're in re, we're in word syndicate. Most of most of these stories are syndicated. Um, they've all these are re, you now. You turn to us for comfort. Where I tell we tell you all the old all the oldies, oldies but goodies. Do you know I directed Rick James? Yeah. Um, so Tom Cruise, I'm we stand with you, and uh, and we we rest in power, gang. I mean, I we we I com couldn't have agreed yeah, more. Great. And sometimes you got to yell and sometimes it's justified. Sorry. Sorry. I don't think I like he yelled it. the first time. But there was a section where he got a little Scientology about what it. Did, wait, what did he say? Well, if you go back to the monologue, because wait. I will deal with your reason. And if you can't be reasonable and if I can't deal with your logic, you're fired. It's like uh, that sounds what? a little Scientology to me. Or I'm sure he not. I'm sure he knows what that's straight out of. Straight out of Hubbard, that's straight out of out of uh, straight out of Netics. It yeah, it's like if I your logic and my right. reasoning, like okay, LRH, your, your side tie showing, buddy. Um, your Sea Org showing. Yeah, your Sea Org showing. Mm. <laughs> We're Shelly. Um, anyhow, so that's that. Let's move on. Well, moving on. Mitch McConnell. What he do? He basically. Now, Republicans have to announce <laughs> right. where they'll reality is a policy choice <laughs> right? where they go. Uh, the president has uh, he's the uh, electoral college has spoken and whatever. So he basically is saying now before when Trump won uh, in 2016, they didn't wait until December to acknowledge it. <laughs> no one waited no, till December. No one waited. He doesn't not wait for the... Not one person. Uh, not one person. Yes, he didn't wait for the Electoral College to speak and all not that Not one shit. Democrat. Not no. one... Uh, so that's their big thing now is that they... 
they're just going like, I have a policy shift that I'd like to, I have a policy paper and it's just reality. Like that's their big from the desk of Mitch McConnell. I mean, um, he did congratulate. Yeah. Great. Three days ago. Yeah. At way beyond the point when he should have, he basically acknowledged reality. And then liberals are so feckless that they go like, well, that's good of him. Good of him to acknowledge. It's like, Who go fuck that? it. Plenty of people said that. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So, and then today hmm. they all got the vaccine or this yeah, is or, Friday. Uh, what's his face did public, like he got it. Schumer, Pelosi um, and Pence and Pence got it. Pence got uh, it like on air. Pelosi, Pelosi and McConnell. Um, I just hope that uh mother was in the room when Pence got it. Cause you don't want to. <laughs> He can't, doesn't, he has you his need policy. A male is he, doesn't, nurse. he doesn't, yeah, exactly. That's funny. Um, yeah, no, he did have a male nurse. Good for him. <laughs> um, which, of mother. course, is whatever. We won't get into it. Mother. Um, is mother there? Mother was probably there. Yeah, Mar mother's right there. Second mother. lady. Um, uh, good for mother got a female mother? and father got a male. Mm. <laughs> They're from the Middle Ages. Like mother got a female, yeah. father got a male. Lollipop after. Um, so good for them, and good that they, um, with the vaccines. That's good. I my, the observation I made about um, conspiracy theorists uh, question everything except conspiracy theorists did mm -hmm. very well on Twitter. <laughs> I yeah put it up did good really job. well. It's just a good point, Neil. Good that a boy bird. <laughs> um, and. <laughs> Uh, the other thing you could do is just exclude people, make it like, uh, you're not allowed to get it yeah. and then they'll want it. Um, yeah. Then they're like, why aren't we getting it? Yeah. Um, Dave did a joke in the nineties where <laughs> it was, Already if you wanted, cause it's so fucked up. Um, it basically, if you wanted, they could have made the Holocaust work on um, they could have put black people in auschwitz if they put a velvet rope in front of it <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's just so it's That's just like so it, i learned that also like if someone that you know plays hard to get mm. just go okay we're doing this thing goodbye and they go oh, oh yeah oh what, why didn't you why? invite me what do you oh i would have come no you wouldn't have if we had invited you straight up you wouldn't have come so we have to play fucking reverse psychology with you all the time and it's exhausting <laughs> you know what's funny the republicans not just their behavior right now reminds me of one time my brother and me and my dad we rented videos and we went I, they rented a he-man cartoon and i rented a barbie's mm -hmm. movie At, as a sign of you wanted to balance the house or something <laughs> and we were deciding which one to play first and like let's play the barbie one they're like nah we're not watching the barbie one you can watch that tomorrow we're going to watch the He-Man one all together because we all... Especially your dad. <laughs> dad was like, fucking He-Man. Go ahead. So I threw a fit and I went to my room and I was like, I'll show them. I'm not even going to watch it. And guess what they did? They started watching it and they were having fun and I could hear them and I was like, ah, is that popcorn? Fuck. And I just like slunk, slunked out and just... Yeah. quietly ate popcorn with you them. probably stood for five minutes i like, did i was just like stood like well i'm not gonna sit down i'm not here for long no i'm just this having is some very popcorn. temporary <laughs> what's happening right now it's just what it looks like with the republicans it's like i guess he's the president yeah like yeah Whatever. They're, they're gonna make it they're gonna make it worse it's not it's still bad what they're doing it's pretty bad yeah it's still they're bad not a because i was seven and now there's a thing where, uh, I was going to say Verizon, uh, mm -hmm. Pfizer yesterday, F Verizon, <laughs> Verizon. Um, uh, was said yesterday that they just, uh, a bunch of the vaccine hasn't been picked up. Wow. It's where? Just, just in the it. pizza boxes. They have it at the, at the depot. Depot. <laughs> um, and no one, they just haven't, uh, they just forgot they they uh they just forgot they just some of it hasn't been um millions of vaccine doses already but states say shipments were like there's already 
fucking miscommunications. I mean, did you think? Look how the look no, how well, the crisis that's the was thing, handled from the people who brought you masks. Right. Just I mean, like, the, I was uh, America cannot the founding. It the, it's we. We were founded on nonsense. We came here and natives were like, what are you doing here? And we were like, uh, we're looking for India. And they were like, this is not India. And we were like, fake news. Yeah. This is India. You're Indians. Get used to it. And we, it's the same fucking thing over. Nope. That's not what happened. No. Here's what the reality you're is. You're Indian. Yeah, you're Indian. Get used to it. Lock them up. Uh, and so that's just a conti- it's just the same bullshit. There's a good book that I read called Fantasyland, where it's it was even before that. It was around the same. But once they even calling them explorers, they're it's insane. They're they're breaking and entering people. They're not even explorers. They're <laughs> fucking B and E guys. I don't even. They're like the B and E boys. It's not. They're it's the Columbus and all. Now I'm not saying we. They're wrong. I said this on the podcast, but that there we have to. There's nothing we can do now. Like that's just what happened. We right. stole the land, and we're gonna live on it. And we're gonna enjoy it. Uh, but they're being a boys, and there's to call them anything else is just a is wrong. It's just fact. It's it's incorrect. Moving on. And then I think they're gonna come off the six hundred dollars. It's gonna go down to three. Is it down to three? What the one they're talking about right now that the um three hundred a week federal unemployment, but the, the fucked up thing is that they're funneling the, a lot of people just got a twelve hundred dollar check, whereas if you were on unemployment they're using unemployment to, give, uh stimulus money that I think everybody should be entitled to. Thank you, <laughs> especially give me you, Neil. My uh. Special. Give me my money. Neil especial. Um, or like, let's say if you're under a certain, you make under a certain amount of money. Because let me tell you something, that six hundred dollars yeah. a week was mighty nice. And you know what I like, didn't like is oh. that people called it um, Trump check. I don't like like my one. I've heard my brother call it that. Like I got my Trump check. It just feels like don't make this into kitschy and like don't cute. give him. It's like the Obama phone. It's like they don't fucking Obama phone. There was there was a Alexander Pelosi did a thing on HP. I think it was on Mars show where it was a bunch of um, people on welfare going mm. like, I got my Obama phone. It was like a phone. Oh, it like was a, a phone service that you would get. Obama that was phones. whatever. Um, Do you not like Obamacare? I don't No, I don't like when they make it. I don't. I mean, it's the Obamacare is a stupid thing to call it. I don't. Well, it, I think it, it, was, it, it came from Republicans much. saying Obamacare, and they were like, yes. okay, whatever. I mean, yes, it's never positive. Right. In the Trump check one, it felt positive. positive. Like this positive. is, It was like more in line with what he was about. Like, right. I'm going to give you money, and right, I'm going right. to put my name on that, and all that. It's just some bullshit, but um, I, don't, I don't like it. it I, don't, I don't know. I just don't like the, the, the it feels like. Obama phone felt racist mm. and Trump checks Trump check feels false. Uh, just. It feels falsely populist. Mm. It's like, you're not for these people. You didn't, I mean, there's the, where he said like, I don't even want to shake their hands. These people are disgusting. <laughs> um, which is, of course he thinks <laughs> so that. Of course. of course he thinks that. There was another thing I heard that he said where, where I was watching something where he didn't think that Russia he said, Putin said, uh, where he goes, well, I just asked Putin and he said he didn't do it. I don't know why they would do it. Like there were so many fucking things he did yeah, that and you, then, it, to prove my point from last week of no one remembers shit. No, and it was in Helsinki. And yes. then he says, then when people call him, it's like, so you're saying our intelligence, like, you know, people took him to task and he's like, I mistakenly yeah, should have said, said I, know why, he yeah. shouldn't have done, yeah. it wouldn't have done it. It's like. And I watched it again last night. There were a bunch of butts. It was all, he meant so, what he said. Of course he did. Yeah. Mm. I honestly can't even believe some of the um, excuses we've just accepted and been like, whatever. What it's are you such a do? low bar that it's like, okay, I don't know. What we, are you going to do? I mean, that's just... the the Rock said some dumb shit in the New York Times or something where he basically, 
You're already shitting on him? Yeah, something. fuck him. <laughs> um, what's he ever done for us? Um, He's the EP. Other than his, give us our, yeah, he give us, us our, his time. I, and uh, do, help I, us I with one of our most important, uh, popular episodes. <laughs> um, he said something about the fact that they shouldn't have bothered with the impeachment because they weren't going to convict him. But it's like, dude, you got to do You can't something. let a guy fucking do illegal shit. Right. And I also think the impeachment, of course, it contributed to him not getting to to him getting yeah. uh, voted out. And he get it's just he also like tarnishing him in ways that he perceives as unfair is I think it does do something. If you're going to be scrappy with him and play with him in the you way he does, like not have you if you have a bad child, you can't just go ah. Bad apple. Way. You still got to fucking put lock him, uh, ground him, even though he's going to burn the house down. Yeah. You still got to ground him and then hope and then make sure that the burn is you can put the burn, <laughs> the burning out. Like there's just nothing you can. He's just the bad. <laughs> he's he's like, problem child. He's like those. He's like those. Uh, you adopt a kid from Ukraine. Yes. And they're insane. The insane. Like, biting fuck. you. And you got it. Sally Jesse Raphael can't help you. <laughs> the good son. Send he's him to boot son. camp. <laughs> doesn't help. Send him Mari. Um, what do we do? There was a, we did a sketch one time that we cut called, uh, it was, it was a very bad idea for a sketch. Wasn't it on the, I think it might, it was Sally Jesse. Right? Sally Jesse. Yeah. And there was a boot, it was Mandela <laughs> yeah, it was, was Mandela. the boot camp instructor. <laughs> it's such a bad sketch. I mean, it's like, it's and so I funny, did the though. meanest thing, what? which is there was a, uh, all the kids wore t-shirts that said Mandela's boot camp. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and this goes, my fat phobia is old and deep. I remember when I went to camp, it, when I was like 10, that if that they had t-shirts for people, and if you were too fat, they didn't have them in your size, so your t-shirt was just blank. So I did that in the Mandela sketch where the skinny kids got the right t-shirts and the fat kid got a blank one. Wow. Because I am a deep-rooted dick oh my god damn now i'm gonna go back and watch i'm like i have in fact i believe i have a mandela's boot camp t-shirt upstairs <gasps> for just for a rainy day thank you there's one of each now russian hack this was not good yakov smirnoff no <laughs> my uh, mom told me to look uh, out the window um the here's the thing that i the thought that i had that they don't that they're not bringing up I my bet is America has has hacked every single country on earth to the same depth. That's why that they Russia. Know. Yes, and well they apparently someone in the private sector realized that they were getting hacked. Like it was cuz it's not only the government, it's like 400 of 425 Fortune 500 companies. Uh, no, I just mean if you have done that kind of dirt in a lot of countries, you know well, how vulnerable. Uh, yeah, you are. so now it's that thing where this is it's a it's a it's a mutually assured destruction, right? It's the it's we're all if we're all hacking each other, it's it's a it's there's nothing. If Russia does something to us, we'll just fucking knock out. Like if yeah. they knock out our thing, we'll not. It's just we all it's it's just like a fucking it's Spider Man. Like most things in life now, it's the Spider Man meme. Brody's pointing at each other, <laughs> and uh, and. I don't I mean I'm not China I, I just assume I, it'll it hurts copyrights obviously it hurts like in intellectual property but I don't think that Russia is gonna take out our electrical grid I don't think Russia is gonna fuck with our nukes I don't think Russia you know I, I think that they realize that there's gonna be that if you play it out it's yeah. like and then what it all it's all bad right so what I say is help yourself, Russia. <laughs> well, help yourself and uh, just leave the, turn out the light on the way out. I mean, I, honestly, it's, uh, what are they going to do? Also, I feel like we, since the Patriot Act, I'm, I'm so numb to the fact that we're such a surveillance state. Like mm -hmm. we, there's no real privacy. No. So. I mean, that's the, the great irony of the, all the vaccine thing. It's like, it's, we talk about it here. It's like Bill Gates 
doesn't want to tr- bill gates is already tracking you <laughs> it's like what tracking there's, you the so technology like, that there's technology that can literally just follow you yeah to and from home i it's mean maybe not in venice google but, yeah google <laughs> google maps it's i mean it's yeah china from the second you're there you're covered on I, video i was looking up something i was like fuck i gotta find this website and i couldn't remember how i got there and i kind of remembered what i googled so i went into this weird tab in my google history Mm -hmm. and i go and i called google history go ahead yeah but it wasn't it was a different google history tab and it took me to a place where it was like it brought me to everything i've ever googled since 2004 it's like being on ayahuasca I was like, <laughs> I went back to slavery and um, I'm a slave and I went and it just showed me anything I Googled that had that keyword in it. And it scared me. I mean, I it, it didn't surprise me, but to see that everything, everything I've ever thought you of. You know what's a weird on, one it's that is, is very, uh, that, that. I deleted it. That I like, I'm delete used, all. That I'm like. Everywhere you've Kinda ever gone, to. every yeah. every single thing you've. Not Will even, you ever do autofill? Bring up an address that you haven't learned phone number where you're like, it's what like the delete fuck? this stuff. It's like yeah, a phone yeah. number and it's five numbers. It's so old. You're like, what five it's numbers? Fun. We've moved on. To, yeah, exactly. It's so old. But one number. Leslie's so old. <laughs> she got one. Her number's <laughs> eight. <in> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> eight. Um, the yeah, they they. I somebody D, somebody on Instagram DM me and said that from listening to the podcast, they got an ayahuasca retreat uh, message, and they've never Googled it. Fucker. So it's just shit like that where I was uh, that happened to me yesterday where I was talking about something and then it's like isn't it, that a phenomenon though there is some like obviously there's third party Bader people. Meinhof we covered <laughs> Bader it last Meinhof. week okay. Bada. um no there's they sell your third party obviously yeah. stuff like that so that's fine but like we still get searches for those hideous sandals that you hate mm. oh still- that's the, you know what I got that today <laughs> I was wondering the basic like, oh, bitch sandal yeah. I love it um yeah. so that's explainable but there is oh, fuck I forgot there's a name for because everyone's like they're listening to us well they are but they what's are, gonna but happen is they're gonna say it was an accident of course it's just what they do right it's just what it's there it's the system they run like oh there's one person a guy he was weird he was from the ukraine he used to bite us <laughs> and and he's trouble His but he's Yakov gone now Spirinov. yeah but um, he's gone now and it they'll just act like it's isolated but it'll it's it's their it's their this is the, okay so the thing i read maybe i'm wrong here but from what i remember it's not that they're actively listening to you even though they are that doesn't always uh connect to their third-party ads it's that they have such a tight algorithm on everybody that they know when they you're know gonna... they not like in your head but they if they clicked on the pod you know through Right. something and then there's keywords in the pot like they yeah the algorithms are so well yeah deep. we have we have yeah we have, popular video about ayahuasca yeah yeah so it yeah. just comes to it's just like by association and then you start being like oh, they're listening to me they're not necessarily listening to you how how it seems it's just the algorithms go so deep they have just so many data points on us yep that feels like magic yeah but uh it's not magic black magic <laughs> I don't what like you it. call me? I have a joke about this, but they're just to me they're just late. Who like late? we who's late? Like we would have done been had already bought them sandals. So mm. I'm still getting ads for it. It's like Google. I if I was gonna get those gross <laughs> fucking sandals, <laughs> I googled it a month ago. <laughs> it was a while ago. Like at least a month ago. So yeah, no, they don't. They, they just they're, they don't fall they're, off. They're they're like corny, but they're, they're just corny. like a corny motherfucker. Like <laughs> you guys still, we all still doing that. It's I have a joke about it. You'll see it in the Netflix special if I'm ever allowed to shoot it. No. Um, this may not pertain to you, but James Harden, bearded guy, bearded guy. Um, he uh, good or bad? He wants. He's demanding a trade. Oh. Even though he he's a weird guy. How does that generally go when 
it they goes demand okay it it fuck once you demand the trade other teams it it fucks it's you fuck the team you're on he, dem- he says i want out of houston okay Why? so houston goes to trade him and everyone that's trading with houston goes well you got a thing you're fucked because i don't have to offer you as much as i would normally because i know this guy wants out Mm. So it's just a dick move across the board. Now, one of the reasons that it gets floated is because the owner of the Rockets is super conservative ah, okay. and he doesn't want to play for him, whatever. Okay. Um, yes, but they're all pretty conservative. I know. They're all it's billionaires. Find me get, one that's like. You don't become a billionaire doing the right thing. Yikes. Um, uh, looks like the guy on the. He looks like the guy. HBO he, show? he looks like. Uh, he looks like a cross between <gasps> Paul Reiser. <laughs> And uh, Ed O'Neill from uh, Ed O'Neill. From the, he looks like every guy in, in Chicago at a bar. Um, so who's going to get around for the table? For Tata. Um, for Tata. So, 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 yeah. So I don't know where these guys are going to find they, these. Happier times. They used to be yeah. friends. Yeah. I guess he didn't know he donated to Trump. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there they are saying. at the game. Well, that's just them, him bum rushing them and them pretending oh. to have to, but they have if a guy comes up to you at a baseball game you got to talk to him you can't be like what get the fuck out of here <sighs> yeah. um and i think he donated to trump like this past summer but so. if you look and i didn't realize uh after i looked after i realized a lot of game show hosts are conservative uh-huh. <laughs> it's really sad it's like alex rebeck no was he conservative he donated to trump i think and some like local conservative whatever uh-huh. uh but yeah, a lot like Home Depot. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's just so many huge companies that I think it's just like guys because in the rest of the world. Human rights. They don't. They don't. They want lower taxes, less regulation. Yeah. They just want Republican shit. It's they. They think that they succeeded because of Republican values. But it, whatever. It's it's. I think it's a misperception. But yeah. Um. Yeah, of course. Any rich person's a fucking Republican. It's weird if you're not. I commend yeah. rich liberals. You're welcome. Thank you. I think it's very nice because you know I don't know if everybody would. I don't do gotta the same be thing. here. You really don't. <laughs> Thank you. I don't gotta be here. He right blessed now. us, you guys. He blessed um, us. Yeah, I, I. But also, I don't. I. I'm one of the few people who like says that seems like enough money. <laughs> like I don't know how much more could I need. But, Where they're like, there is no. Right. Yeah. There sometimes I'll look at houses, right? And I'll think, eh, I should fucking buy a house like that. The pool and the wine cellar, just a bunch of shit you don't need. And then I'm like, yeah, but then I'll have to live for the, I'll work for the house. Yeah. I will literally just have to do shit to maintain the house. And I don't want to I don't want to do that. I want to no. be a bed boy. <laughs> like God intend intended intend, intend boy too. What do you say? What um. You? So James Harden uh is so from a basketball person. Do you think that's let's call it No, I'm kidding. Um. <laughs> um. Does he, do you I, think that's a good move or is it seen as like whiny? Uh, don't just, be a diva. I think they're like I don't. I think you kind of have to do right by the team, mm. even if you don't like the owner. Meaning, tell them you want to trade. Like, don't act like you want to trade. Just play your play your tits. I mean, he, he's the fucking. Uh, is he really he's good? He's an amazing player. What is he good at? The jumping, or scoring. The shooting? He just scores like crazy. He doesn't even play defense. Does he do the far away like? Uh, he does with? anything you can. He can do a fake. He can get. He can do. He can get to the basket, and he can get his own shot. He can get you off the dirt. He just get you a million ways. You know Steph Curry's always like yeah, point. just jump. No. He does, he has jumpers and he Ooh. very he's better at getting Ooh. to the hoop than KD or Steph 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 okay. Marbury. I'm old. How Steph dare Curry. You. Um, How dare you. So I just think it's it's and also these guys, him and Kyrie Irving, they kind they kind of lose your mind after a while. Yeah, it's the Hollywood thing, but almost worse because you don't people will stop going to see your movies right if you're a big enough dick there's nothing i I just want him to do the thing i don't care what he how he behaves so there's really no 
um, governor on his behavior. So they can act kind of however they want. So even if there's a villain character, you don't mind as long as he plays. I well. don't. Yeah, I don't. I, LeBron was a villain when he went to Miami and I didn't didn't hurt his ratings. Mm. It he probably lost like an endorsement or two, but he didn't really lose any. He didn't really lose shit because he was fucking he's still synonymous with excellence. Yeah. So if you're synonymous with excellence, you have more leeway to be. Yeah, you'd whatever. be a. He get, but oh, James Harden's doing this weird shit where he gave little baby the rapper, uh, little baby or dub baby, little baby because I had the same thought. <laughs> of course, I went there. Um, <laughs> of course, it's I a went. goddamn uh, maternity ward in hip hop right now, <laughs> um, with all the littles and the babies. Um, and um, there's there's the ba- little baby. You won't little baby. you won't dub you're baby. waiting. Little baby James Harden. He gave him a Richard Milley b- uh, watch and a Prada bag and then gave him 300, Ooh. gave him like a hundred grand Why? grand in cash, which they call a Gans? honey bun, which is one of the saddest things I've ever heard. Sounded by a honey bun, which is slow um, for a hundred thousand dollars in cash. Uh, honey bun. Um, I don't like honey bun. He just gave it to him. But why? I don't know. That's where it's like, you're Paul fucking Blake. out of your mind. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. Also, like you're a very weird guy. Also, little baby's not broke. Of course not. Well, not yet. No, no. Give it a couple be. years. Yeah, he he'll, will be. Honey. He'll get there. He'll get there. Yeah. Um. Um. Whenever I see, I how forget. rich is that guy? Do you think James Harden has a lot of money? Yeah. Yeah, he's got. He makes. I he's made two hundred twenty-four million dollars in two hundred in basketball. Yeah. Two hundred and twenty-four million. Yes. See how much Blake, our our <laughs> Cub correspondent, has made. Call. Cool. Call Blake. That'd be so rude. Call him and ask him his net worth. <laughs> I mean, they kind of can't lie. He he yeah. would tell us what he's made. He would tell. It'd just be a little rude. Uh, two hundred twenty-six million dollars. Blake. So hot. yeah. Um, has he been playing longer than James Harden though? Same same amount. Same. They got Pretty drafted. I think the same. Lucky year. human lucky. beings no, they, on Earth. I know. It's because if it was twenty years ago, they would have made. 30 yeah That's what, what's up with the things. contracts in basketball that seems astronomical uh they get half of the door oh like half up front no they get half of the the door 51 uh, percent the door. of the profit goes to the players that's nice well yes compared to football oh i mean Generous. slavery is nice compared to football <laughs> um because slavery there were, you didn't get concussion yeah you didn't get cte um so yeah so it's better and they have a strong labor union and it's good the woman in charge of the nba players association is a, a cool lady yay um black lady named michelle I, something um look it up well look it up well go 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 uh, Michelle Roberts. Roberts. That is correct. Hey, Michelle. Yeah. Um, oh, she, she has a, a nice natural. Smile. She doesn't. She's got. She keeps a natural. Nice short natural. Okay. But, you know, <laughs> it's a. It's a. She's a revolutionary, but she doesn't go on and on about it. You know what I mean? Um. Oh, speaking of basketball, I mean, this is Dude, a. This, is a, this, this whole bad. episode is trouble in the winter circle. Yeah. This whole um, trouble. trouble. Yeah. Yes. It deserves it. We gotta. Re- we have to renew it. Uh, Vanessa Bryant is suing her mom. No, her, mom, mom suing her. Her Vanessa, yes, Vanessa Bryant's mom is suing her because she said Kobe would take care of her, and Vanessa Bryant is. Uh, some of people were reciting with Vanessa Bryant. And it's like, no, lady, side with Vanessa Bryant. That's the right side. Why would you side with her? Why would you, Why would you side with the because mom? Because she's got two hundred million dollars. The Kobe said, "I'll," and she won't take care of her mom. It's That's fucking, not, No, did you read the whole situation? No, I didn't read the whole okay. situation. So what like, is it? That's not the situation. It's that her mom uh, is so her her mom basically has always been taken care of by them for the last like twenty something years. Whatever. And um, then I think there was like some money issue. There was some issue and they were, she was looking for a new house for her mom. While she was looking for a new property for her mom, her mom started going to the, 
tabloids and saying, she's going to kick me out of my house. She's not going to take care of me. And then she started bringing it to the press. That's when she was like, all right, mom, shut the fuck up. Still kept looking for her house. So they tried to move past that. But every time the mom demanded, like, no, I demand $5 million, a, a Mer like a this Mercedes. This is what we could have talked to Chris about. Who, Chris who? Iraq. It's not, it's. Meaning the mom is a, a, the mom is literally like, hey, I'll take care of you. But it's like, no, no, no. I want five million dollars. I want a Mercedes Benz F SUV. Her mom's I want trying to get a divorce, basically. So the thing is, and then Vanessa Bryant's like, my mom has been collecting alimony per month since 2004 from her ex-husband. Yeah. And we took care of her for the last 20 years. Yeah. So out of our generosity, not because we had to, because she's financially fine. Mm -hmm. because she gets alimony i guess that's from what i read and then her mom and she was now, married to james worthy <laughs> like our great james worthy i don't know who she was no okay <laughs> okay she I, like, wasn't. I, think, yeah. I just thought it'd be a small world one of okay. small world things <laughs> so her mom now is suing her because she said i was their personal assistant and i babysat yeah. vanessa bryan's like you were never in our business affairs we got you in a gated community in newport and she's like, I hadn't had a kid between my last kids and then my new kid was 10 years. And my and her kids are all in sports from day to night. And she's like, my mom's not babysitting anyone in the last 10 years. And the first time she had her, she had a kid in 2016, there was like a 10 year gap. So she was like, I don't know what she's talking about. She didn't babysit. And we wouldn't, I wouldn't have my mom doing my, all of our business affairs, which makes sense to me because it seems like a lot of business affairs I don't know if you just trust your mom who isn't. I think the first person you go to is your Teresa. Is your is your uh, mother in law? If you're Kobe Bryant, I think the first person you <laughs> ask about your business affairs. So is she's like, your you didn't babysit anybody. You haven't babysat them. There's a ten year period where you didn't babysit them because they were in school full time and tons of extracurricular activities outside of it. Here and there, like a grandmother, you have, but now she's asking for ninety five dollars. A day, uh, $95 an hour, an hour That's 12 hour again. days for the last it's 18 a, it's years. It's a drop and just fucking give her the fucking money. Don't and go to the press. And you, you know what? I don't, you would the not. Be to, oh, no, no, no. I wouldn't be playing. I would have no part of this. You would <laughs> Meaning be like, Meaning I wouldn't, I. Sorry. That's a hostage situation and you would It's be, a, it's, it's a divorce. It's a alimony situation. But it's. I mean, a, do you remember when Blake had his thing? Of course I do. We yeah, don't talk like, about that. We, yeah, we don't talk about it. But it's... A, it's but that it's is a when, different when thing. Ra could talk about this ad nauseum. Where, With an actual divorce. No. Yeah, what, yes, but also... I saw two uh, black celebrities talking one time. And uh, if you wow. can believe it. Phenomenon. Because uh, I don't want to out <laughs> either of them. Like and, a um, and one of them was like, yeah, my mom's not talking to me because I wouldn't hmm. get her a certain kind of car. And uh, and the other one goes like, you're 40 and your mom just stopped talking to you? <laughs> like, it just, it's a... <laughs> That's funny. It's a, it's a meaning about, like, fame, success, money. Um, and they... There's a... My lawyer... Uh, a black, proud black woman uh -oh. referred to Chappelle show as a catastrophic success, Yay. which is a that's such so a funny. great fucking term. And I don't know if it's her coinage, but that's what happens. It's like this is a catastrophic su success for who? Well, just Kobe, Kobe Vanessa, yeah, yeah. the not even the death and the no, just no, no, the your life gets so great. It's the thing I say about Christopher. It's like with a pile of fries, just give people some fucking fries. Um, but it is, it is a catastrophe in some regards. There are parts of my life, family wise, yeah. that are a catastrophe. For sure. And I understand. But and it's d entirely due to, uh, being successful and what that, how that makes the people around you feel. Right. But if one of your siblings if one of them demanded, sued i'm going we're going to the mats yeah it's it's you're not gonna yeah you gotta get petty to me it's like if someone took care of you for 20 years it, it everything seemed like she vanessa had all kobe had and, weird shit with his parents too 
Like and his sisters. Yeah, like he they were gonna sell his shit at one it point. It seemed like they had every intention. She had every intention of continuing to take care of her mom. Maybe moving some shit. I, it just seems like oh things are different now. You know when somebody else takes over, you get a new boss or a new manager or something, yeah. and they're just changing shit you don't yeah. like. Yeah. And I'm gonna make a stink. And that's just kind of what it seemed like because it doesn't seem like she would put her mom out after housing her for 20 years. Yeah. So she's just coming back with being like, well, I, I took care of the kids and then I mean, it yeah. just seems gra- grasping for sure. She went with, nobody was sh- with, with him shooting at the gym <laughs> is my point. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of undeserved money, Mackenzie Bezos. Talk about fries. Fry Talk different. about a lot of fries <laughs> that you didn't. I mean, I guess she worked the books for the first three years. So yeah, yeah you deserve $90 billion. Uh, but 45, 45. Mackenzie Bezos is being fucking super, cool about super it. Super cool. Yes. Super cool. Uh, she's worth five, $57 billion. Um, After giving shit away. Yes. Uh, no, it's probably before. Because okay. she only gave four away. Five. She gave... 4.8. Four point, I don't know. I see 4.2 and 4. Oh. Um, so, um, while I think uh, alimony and split... Assets is obscene, absurd, and you call it great. Oh, I didn't. I you said don't. crazy. Oh, well, you said so. great. Sorry, I only heard great. I heard what I wanted you, to hear. Yeah, exactly. There go. Um, uh, yeah, she, she, Bezos himself would never do this. No. So this is a truly like a Robin Hood situation where, where she robbed the rob the rich and is given to truly rob the rich and is truly giving it to the poor and the here's the thing that she's doing that's interesting uh because i a friend of mine work was in advertising found it depressing so went into the nonprofit sector mm-hmm. and found that more depressing than advertising <laughs> which is hilarious so funny. um <laughs> A lot of times what happen is, happens is it's not the theory of change uh, MO. Look up theory of change. Sir, yes, sir! Uh, rich people come with their... It's like, well, I... Kn- you, they'll give money to... Uh, rich people will give money to a charity of some kind, right? And... But with the money comes the string of now you have to get the outcomes that I want and you have to do things that I, you have to basically implement my ideas for your charity that you guys are an expert, you guys are experts on. And, but somehow I think I'm an expert because how do you, would I be, right. could explain. I be a billionaire without this? being an expert? Can you explain this? Yeah, exactly. Um, it's late arriving instant expert, which I think we have a song for yeah. and we never use. Now you listen here. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually well, funny. Yes, late arriving instant expert. Now you listen here. Um, so theory of change is a specific type of methodology for planning, participating, and evaluating that is used in companies, philanthropy, not-for-profit, and government sectors to promote social change. Sure. Theory of change uh, defines long-term goals and then maps backward to identify necessary con- uh, preconditions. I- I'm kind of wrong about what the theory... But it's this thing where rich people dictate. It's like the golden rule. Whoever yeah, has yeah. the golden makes the rules. And Mackenzie Bezos is just going, take the money and it's do with it nice. what you want. Now, yeah. the risk is... They What's misuse about? the money and they get a bunch of jackets and shit. Um, Still uh, got jackets. Uh, this is a joke that I wish we'd done in Half Baked um, that Dave pitched. Um, when, uh, there's a point in Half Baked where they're, they're making money and they, keep, they all buy a dumb thing. And Dave, want, and Dave has to go like, the fuck are you guys doing? Like Scarface, you can't buy a fucking dog and whatever. But Joel was like, I should do the whole scene in a fur coat and never mention it, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which is so fucking funny. And I so regret not doing it. It's so funny. It's a lot. It would have been like tonally, it would have been wrong. But at that point, the tone is so dumb anyway, we should have just done it. 
I thought that there was a tone. I don't want to violate the tone of this fucking weed movie. Um, uh, anyhow, so fucking funny. But that's what you don't want to get. And then they they do with it with whatever. But that's the risk you take when you fucking give money away. So you can't dictate unless you whatever. Most um, of the time, if you give it to, like she's giving to historical black colleges and yeah, it's like whatever. I don't. That's yeah, your like problem I don't. Now. It, it's sometimes I think about uh, whether it's like if I just I, like I was giving my maid, my cleaning lady money. She's a maid. Um, uh, I was giving my cleaning lady money during the pandemic. Right. I mean, she and she wasn't coming, working. Yeah. And giving her like good double what I, I don't know how I came to the. I know. But we talked about was, how yeah. you were. Uh, it was. A little. It, but. um but it's like, I don't know, man, what she she needs the fucking money. Right. You don't really need the money. So like, well, I'm going to get she's not she's not fucking buying boots. Right. She's just living a small yeah. immigrant life. Yeah. And if so, I think most people that you can give money to are worthy of your money, even if it's like people play God, though, with money. I mean, they really yeah. like I, I when I worked at Whole Foods when I was young. I think I told you this before, but there, if you brought in your own bag back then, you got mm -hmm. five cents off your bill. Yeah. Um, or you could donate your five cents. And I worked at one in a very rich area and they, those motherfuckers were like, well, what are the, what are the, um, what are the charities? And it was like inner, inner city kids to science camp, inner city kids to arts camp, or like inner city kids do some other music hmm. camp. Hmm. They'd be like, hmm. let me decide. No, I, I actually give a lot already. Yeah. And I'm like, so take it off the bill? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay. I would never take it off the bill. I would always just do it on my own. I'm like, no, you're doing The only people I won't give to is the uh like the American Heart or Lung Association. Because if you look at their you can go on charity nav yeah. navigator, it's not sponsorships, it's salary. It's how much of the money goes to the cause. Oh, if they're wow. fucking over 50% overhead, which is like, oh, fuck you guys. No, that's why I don't donate my clothes to Goodwill because they utilize this fucking federal loophole for nonprofits where they pay people. Literally, I, I saw a list of the um, salaries all over the map of under a dollar an hour, 11 cents an hour. This one lady was blind. She's like, I can only afford to go to work and go home because what I make a day is how much it costs me to take the bus. This is their employees? This is their low-level employees at in the shops. If you're disabled, they can pay you. They don't have to pay you uh, according to any federal Sweet. rate. So they interviewed this. I'm Republican. Sweet. <laughs> they interviewed the CEO and he makes $9 million a year. Yeah. I'm like, you're paying people 11 yeah. Yeah. cents. Yeah, if you go on Charity Navigator and uh, okay, Charity Navigator. Goodwell... Good give well, sorry. And they you can see the breakdown. I mean, the disappointing thing about Charity Navigator is the the most effective charities or you know, like the most like direct mm. is like uh is our, our mosquito nets that are anti malaria. They're like they couldn't be less sexy. <laughs> like I gave nets. Uh, What'd you give this year? I gave a bunch of money and they bought nets. Um bug assault. And then there's also um, the 10 best charity. Oh, that's everybody's heard of charity. Go to 10, oh, Ronald uh, House. Go, okay, to, Ronald. go to 10, uh, top one. Um, so it's like United Methodist committee on relief of global ministry, a, a child's hope international, abandoned children's these fund. Are these, sad. these are, yeah, they're all very sad. Uh, it turns out people that need money are usually so pretty sad. for sad reason. Actually, it's hunger, hunger, whatever. They're not, they're not and, all and, very sexy. No, they're not. None of them are sexy. I mean, like, Let's be honest. Like, they're. It, it's just. I don't. I don't know why we're saying that. Other than like, historically, black college. You can tell the story of the person that you're helping. Whereas a lot of it's like, it's a net that <laughs> is against malaria. Oh fuck. It's there's no right narrative in like that one fly would have gotten in. It's fucking. It stinks. Um. Anyhow. <laughs> No, Do but better. it's good. It's just, it's good. I like, I like it. Yeah. Uh, good for you. Rest in, rest in power, Queen. Mackenzie <laughs> Bezos. Um, Moving on. This is baby beautiful. bust. What's going on here? Everybody thought there was going to be a baby boom because of the pandemic. Nah. What? 
Bust. Are you sure? Positive. Look it up. I feel like people are fucking. Google baby bust. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> <Just a rip. laughs> 2020 triggered a baby bust, and that will have lasting impacts. There you go. Early in the pandemic, there were jokes about quarantines prompting a baby boom, but roughly nine months since COVID-19 triggered a national emergency, and the U.S. experts are reporting a baby bust. I don't know why I'm saying it like I, I knew it. Like, I, what did I tell you? Uh, nationwide, a Thursday Brookings Institute report projects around 300,000 fewer births next year. Great. Google Trends showed significant decreases in sex and pregnancy-related searches. And in a report published Wednesday, Modern Fertility found that about 30% of people with ovaries are changing their family plans, <laughs> with most deciding to delay conception. They did a study. I like people with ovaries. Do you? Because I, it, it made me a little crazy. Because I was like, "What? I feel like this is some ovaries. gender shit." Of course it this is. is some, that's why it's funny to me. It's they like, explain it later. People with ovaries. Go to. It's because the, they don't want uh, do pronouns, no. Yes, they would be, uh, go to where it's people, uh, people, <laughs> people with ovaries. Fuck. That's gonna. That's literally like you uh, have to check a box. Yes, people with ovaries. Uh, keep going down. Well, um, in a survey. About 30% of nearly uh, 4,000 people with ovaries. Exp- <laughs> uh, fucking it's so insane. Neil, you're being a real that person they were, with ovaries I know. Right now. Uh, that they were changing their fertility family planning timelines. Respondents identified as female, 99%. Or gender non-conforming, non-binary, gender queer, 1%. Whoa, whoa. I mean, I, I, I was, <laughs> I'm all for... It's hilarious to me. I know, but it's so... It's just so fucking unnecessary and egotistical on their part. Like, no, change it. Change it. I change. Why can't you? Motherfucker, we've got everything set up for these two things. Just figure it out. But again, I'll get canceled if I say that. <laughs> um, uh, that was a character I was doing called Republican Neil. Um, that was That's Republican? a character, yeah, Republican Neil, who doesn't, who just wants the, the these. Sounded like trans Neil. Tra- well, I'm transphobic. Transphobic. Because because I'm Republican. Okay. Republican Neil's transphobic and he and he loves that handicapped people make eleven cents an hour. I'd <laughs> like to see if we can get it down to ten by the <laughs> second quarter of next year. That's Republican Neil. He thinks in qu- in quarterly intervals, everything's about the dollar. Okay. Um the other thing in this article that was interesting is there were less people born in twenty eighteen as well. So that meaning more like the fertility rates been going we're making fewer people i which wonder I'm very if the news about. the stressful news helps or hurts of course like it, it hurts. helps because they hurts. they it, it well whatever it makes people have less kids yeah. whatever you decide because it whatever feels just uh, it's not worth it's the fucking this? why would you bring someone here it's another one of my amazing jokes why would you bring someone no to you do it for world? climate change i do it for climate change uh division and um overcrowding which and that was before covid <laughs> i've added we actually, covid oddly enough myth mythbusters we don't have an overcrowding issue what do you mean meaning there's plenty of space uh yeah if you are happy to burn the forests down no, it's just like there's a lot of uh, capital cities even that just have le- like most of the population is in SF, L.A., New York. Oh, you're talking about America or the world? Um, I guess. Let's see. I'm trying to think. I mean, most people gather in certain. Cities, I don't right? think Obviously. that there's a surplus of space on Earth. I don't uh, meaning we can always use more and anything we can keep empty becomes forest, which is good for the Earth. So let's I think stop you're wrong, let's, but I'm not sure. But I, I just, I don't know. If, but what do you, what's the, I, the, I, the parameters, I think, of what we would disagree on. Okay. Meaning, of course, it, I mean, is it, is everywhere Bangladesh? No. Oh, I'm not saying, I'm talking about habitable space that people, but people just end up gathering. I'm talking about habitable space in an environmental context. Like right. just fucking enough. Because then you need more people, then you need more cows, then you, it's just, there's too many people. Whether everyone would live in Tokyo-like conditions is right. another, that's a whole other argument. But I'm saying there's no upside to all these people. Trust me. <laughs> okay. There's zero upside. 
And I, you can take that to the bank. That's how I'm going to end every segment. Now. <laughs> okay. And I say that as a person with testicles. I was going to say. It, what is a person with a man would be a person, person with, with testicles? No, because you can be a man and not have testicles. A and person not with. A good, not a good man. Ovaries and testes. There you go. Oh, there you go. I'm a person testes. with testes. And you're testy. So. Sue me. I'm a person with testes. <laughs> what can I say? What can I say, Bianca? Um. Oh, this is a useless observation that I've had. Yeah, what is this? I'll tell you what it is. What is this? Useless observation. Oh. There, yeah, well. He does. I know he can't win. He cut off the beginning. But the oh, beginning but the is, beginning is the best the part. Beginning is the, no, the, the no. beginning should be the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, this is the. Um, so. He's got a little something for something. you. Perfect. <laughs> That's it. He's got a little something for you. Yeah. Uh, keep going. <laughs> He's got a little something for you. I know the useless observation. Go. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Fuck. Do like a a, a, a ten frame dissolve Damn. fade out Neil, at the, like where a, we said. I'm like a guy who's you're like edited a jingle before. Quincy Jones. I really am in that. I in that I, in that I <laughs> except I. Well, Quincy didn't write any song. Quincy didn't write any Michael Jackson song. You he did write good the. He did write the Sanford and Son theme. Wow, really? In forty five minutes, being? apparently high on opium. <laughs> what I heard. <laughs> Um, what I um, all right. You ever, you'll know you what ever? I'm saying once I start saying it. Okay. There is a type of person who, when you're talking, will do a little mouthing. Uh, and I don't know what the fuck they're doing where it's like, did you hear this already? What I, I people do it all the time. Like I, I was a younger kid thing. It, I would venture that one in 15 people does it that you'll and that yeah like some they it's this weird so thing of like it. are you channeling what the fuck are you doing are you on are you on are you a spirit padre i think when people do it the most is when you're telling them a like an anecdotal story or really something really funny and they're anticipating people do it a lot then so that might happen to you more because People really do get so into but it. What they if, like, I don't still don't know what they're doing. They're I'm not like it's not like a leaning forward. Like, no, no, oh. no. It's just like a anticipating the what you're about to say. But I've had people do it when I've been giving them directions. It's fucking oh, weird. weird. It's actually weird. OK, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's a fucking weird. It is a, it's a useful observation. Uh, have you seen it? Well, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And I don't do know you, what they're doing. Uh, do you? Does it bother you? Deeply. No, it, uh, it, it, I don't, I just don't know what they're doing because a lot of times they don't know they're doing it. No, they don't know they're doing it or they don't know it's so obvious. Yeah. And it's, I, I'm going to start calling people out. We have to start yeah. calling these people out. We have to start. We have to tear, bring them to the carpet. All the movements. Um, and whether they have testes or <laughs> ovaries. ovaries. Um, yeah, the, <laughs> so I don't like it and I, if you do it stop doing it you You're heard it guy. and you can take that to the bank that's how I end the oh segment God. you can take that to the bank Moving on. Um, I have a non-doc watch the show Your Honor with Brian Cranston yeah it's actually the first episode kind of annoyed me the second episode it's getting good Your Honor great if you're bored it's I'm like not, really tense everything is very is this going to happen? Is this going to happen? Oh, shit. Did they find the inhaler? Did they find the... It's um very uh, uh, attention Plotty. grabbing. Okay. Like 24 or something. Yeah, but like... When they go, well, better. they don't go to commercial, but the, every scene could be like... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Everything is very important. And yeah. It could be the end of well, I want Trouble in the Warners. Okay. <laughs> is that Warners? <laughs> Trouble in the Warners. Um, the, I, I, someone made me watch this flight attendant show on HBO with... Kel, Ke, Kelly Cuckoo? Cuoco. Cuoco. There uh -huh. we go. It was like, I don't know what's going on at HBO. You have The Undoing on one hand, which is very good. It's on Tonally. HBO Max. Well, The Undoing was on HBO Max too. HB, but it was produced by the HBO. Oh. By HBO. So this is like very. Uh, well, I know. It's a very. This is back, this Scott is Galloway, the guy who's on the podcast Pivot, made a really good observation. So HBO Max 
only has 12 million subscribers. Okay. But I can't Netflix get back to Netflix has 100 million. Oh. Um, so they basically took an amazing asset, which is HBO. Right. And fucked it up. They fucked it. And made it, it into this, like, everything, everything Mishmash. and nothing. They made it, like, HBO, it's the brand is, and also HBO... There's a metric in Hollywood how much they have to spend per Emmy, meaning take your entire yearly budget yeah. and divide it by the number of Emmys. Okay. HBO was $75 million in Emmy. Netflix is like $175 million. Yeah. Like they had the lowest so, uh, yeah. output to Emmy thing, right? Um, so is HBO Max Cinemax and HBO? Cinemax is not involved. Okay. I, which again game. is like, they don't call it that then. They yeah. should have just called it something, something else. else. Something that did not. What I HBO. will think is going to do well for them is putting all the Warner Brothers movies out. Wonder Woman. Yeah. Th that's going to be a street sweep. And all those actors are mad. And Chris Nolan's mad and all these people. Because they are pro profit. They they were profit participants, meaning yeah, they, they were get getting points. part of the box office. Yeah. They're just going to. It's going to be a litigation nightmare. And they're going to get the fuck suit out of them by all these people. And you don't, they had to, they, they don't, they, if they release this thing on, if you're the rock or somebody and you have 10% of the movie, you're not going to, you can't write, you're not going to get, and anything they do do, you just go, well, how did you get to that number? Right. How did you know what this was going to make? This could be that I they could make a legal case that it they have to pay them like it's the highest uh, grossing movie of all time, or something close to it. Like because they can't the past. disprove it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They can't disprove it. It's so uh, yeah. With points now, points are useless. Yes, the, apparently Gal Gadot and the Warner uh, the 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 um, the Wonder Woman people. I'm sure her Patty Jenkins, the director, and Wig all had points, right? Yeah, Wig's sure. the villain, which would be awesome. Um, and the, apparently, they they just had to give them like they had to give Gal Gadot like ten million. But like we don't. Uh, yeah. Um, like, but uh, how they get to ten? I, but they that, have good comps. I mean, they have they have comps. I'm assuming. Uh, they're bullshit. They don't fucking okay. I'm doing a black sketch show. How well do you think it's going? No, go? no, no, no. But like you've already. But done I'm Wonder saying Woman. that's the no, no, no. But what I'm saying is I'm doing a black. It's 2003. I'm doing a black sketch show. What? How well do you think it's going to do? No, Pretty sure, well, yeah, of course. Right. What are their comps? Reno 911. Fucking, we did. We beat all of them. So if there's always done, the potential to out. That's yeah. what they can argue, right? And that's what that's legally. Warner Brothers is fucked in that way, in as far as I'm concerned, uh, is my guess. There was a bunch of articles last week. We, I'm surprised we didn't talk about it. Surprise. Um, also, Kaylee yeah. Cuoco was a Three Mics fan, so of course she wanted me to write for the the um, airplane, the movie. airplane, airplane, the movie. You know, here's the thing about the airplane, the movie. It, <laughs> the the tone, it. My friend, made, it was like watching Scrubs meets Suits meets Psych, mm -hmm. like. And I don't really like any of those shows. Yeah. No offense. I'm sure the story is interesting, but the music, it's so dated feeling. Not to shit on it, but it was just, it was so like not HBO feeling. Yeah. It was just a different thing. And well, everyone it likes wacky. it. It was wacky. It was, it was like a, like a lot of soap opera music. Um, wow. So it, I regret not writing on it. Said Republican Neil. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just it's confusing when the Undoing comes out and then that comes out. Was the Undoing good? It was fucking amazing. Oh, all right, I'll watch it. I didn't watch you it. You have to watch. I it. watched the first season of all the ladies, the sweaters that the lady sweaters in trouble. Excuse me. Uh, the one, pretty little L liars, little fires everywhere. Little, little fires. Up. No, no, that's Hulu. Liars. Pretty oh, big little lies. Big little God lies. Damn it. White ladies in sweaters. White ladies in um, terrain. So yes. uh, did you oh, like it? Did you like that? I did like it. I mean, I liked the style. I thought over every once in a while, it's fun to watch white, white, rich white people be like 
rich and white rich kind of just yeah, be just, rich and white it's just yeah. like it's nice you you got to watch the undoing you'll like i it. will no i i just didn't know i couldn't get a sense of whether it was good or not it was really good okay good it's entertaining enough all right i'll watch it um now yes we're moving on <laughs> yes, we're doing emails. It's time to check that email. Emails. I received two tips about the how spicy do you want to do it with your lover? Oh, the, okay. The, the questionnaire. Yes. One of them is spicer.com. You can go and there's the questionnaire there. Oh. And one is mojoupgrade.com. I'm assuming they're dot coms. Go on Spicer. Go on, go on Spicer. Sean, this is from Sean, Sean Spicer, Spicer, of course. <laughs> the president's friend. Oh. Did you spell Just it right? Just look up Spicer. Sex app. Oh, it's an app. Oh, fuck. All right, go oh, on the I other see. one. Spicer is an app. I'm not Oh, one. you say you were, you, what your likes and stuff, and you get matches? Oh, you do it with your No, you do it you and some. your partner. Um Mojo Upgrade. Uh Their answer questions on what you good. want. This this is some two thousand two <laughs> shit. Um go up, well. Answer questions on what you want. Your partner answers questions on what they want. We'll show you where you both match. That's interesting because they don't they don't out you. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. They don't go like, you know, that's nice. You know what she wanted to do. You know Have what this wild bitch wanted to do. Take pictures, watch, watch porn watch together. Porn. Nah, yup. Oh, they went with nah. Nah. Oh, they're pretty yep. cool. <laughs> yup is way worse. Uh, yup. Nah, Watching I gotta porn. go with nah is really trying to be cool. Um, but yup to these sounds really strange. Yup is like okie dokie. Uh, have partner <laughs> strip or give me a lap dance. Yep. That I gotta say. <laughs> It would be a nightmare. Don't just don't do that. Don't do that. Don't make this. It's don't make contact. me judge you as a performer. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's like that's why I don't like too much dirty talk because it's bad writing. It's Most like, of it's you here. like you like that you dirty whore. And just like what do you? You should work. You got to take uh, a class. No, but most of it it could just be. I was one guy was like. Lick my balls. I was like, oh, oh I don't know. honey. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> Lick my balls. What? Uh, like so Mojo insult. Upgrade and Spicer, of course, is an app. So so there's, we're helping. Goodbye. You've got um, mail. Neil and Wait, Bianca. Do we have the video? We oh, yeah, let's look at the video. This guy looks, real quick, he looks like, uh, he looks like Cheech. He looks like Cheech's son. Um, this guy looks 13 and 50. <laughs> um, this guy, he looks like Cheech, right? Does he look like Cheech or Chong? He looks more like, you know, I'm, Chong. I'm so fucking racist. He looks like, uh, Carlos Santana is who he looks like. He looks like Carlos Santana. Which Latino After, uh, does he look like? When he went to work with Bob Marley for three months. It was like, hey, man, we did, we did some pretty cool stuff. Um, Carlos Santana, of course, also, I made him sound like the stoner from The Simpsons. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, bro. Hey, little dude. Um, hit it, Will. Hey, Binky and Neil, what's good? Got a question for you about comedy writing. Neil, you always say whoever writes the most uh, is the best. May, hey, and I believe you. Got a question about performing, though. How does that relate to writing? Uh, if you're going to break it down into a binary, which maybe it's not, um, how does performance come in? I see a lot of really great performers that I personally don't think their jokes are very good. I see a lot of really great joke writers whose performance is more understated. How does that relate to each other? Binky, you're a stand-up sommelier. Tell me what you think. Love the show. Appreciate mm. it. I love that. Mm, this guy, he can almost get it from you. He well, can almost get it. Is that your type? Yeah, you gotta clean up the. I mean, this is a fuck. If this guy doesn't live in the Bay, I don't know. How dare you? Fucking anything. He's in Seattle. I don't know jack shit. If I, if this guy doesn't live He's in the Bay, he's also black. You made him Latino. He's half black. How do you know? I can tell. Uh, clearly, he's, he's also half Latino. You don't look like he's clearly Rasta, half black. Carlos Rasta San San Ra, Santana Rasta. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, look at that Rude. right there. He's, he he he's, loves a terrible he pause looks, on a clip. Yeah. Anyhow. Anyways. Um. Send good look. Hit her up. 
Slide, 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 oh, slide, 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 no. slide. That's fine. Um, uh, okay. uh, he mentioned Kevin Hart and Ellen as his Ellen being a good writer. Did he said that here. He in the in, in, the, in the written okay. one. He mentioned Kevin Hart as a great performer and not good writer, and Ellen as a good writer. Wink. Um, <laughs> Neil, show him the watch. Uh, um, uh, and not a good performer. Uh, but that what he's mistaking is energy yeah. for Ellen's quality a good performer. performer. Ellen's a fucking great performer. You wouldn't. She doesn't run around. She's not yelling. But as I pointed out before, Ellen has a perfect comedy pitch. The likes of which you cannot recreate. No one's ever had it. So what about Kevin? Kevin is a good performer. But I would argue Kevin's jokes vary. Some some of Kevin's jokes are well written and some of them are not. Um he would say that, I bet. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I don't I don't know a comic who thinks every joke they write is great. No, so how do you Well get- the the mirror sorry, I the my my bigger point was the once you can combine the two, mm. you're a Hall of Famer. Yeah. If you can write a bunch of jokes, you're Alex Bays, who writes for Seth, who's like the best, to me, the best joke writer in the world. The best just pound for, like, you need a joke? You're doing a monologue in five minutes? I'll write you. He wrote the joke for Seth. Um, Trump says he has a great relationship with the blacks. Uh, I'm assuming the blacks is a white family. Yeah. Um, He wrote for Seth, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he wrote uh, for Tina and Amy uh, like a, a 19-year-old model's warm vagina. Please welcome Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he just doesn't, he's not a gregarious guy. He doesn't mm. want to perform, right? Um, so he makes, I don't know what he makes, about 500 grand a year writing jokes for people. Um, great life. So, but if you're, to... if you're Dave, if you're Chris at one point was a great writer and not a great performer, he became a great performer. Uh, if you're Ellen, if you're the hall of fame, Tosh doesn't move. Daniel yeah. Tosh doesn't fucking move. Yeah, he doesn't. It's amazing. He doesn't literally yeah. doesn't touch the mic and is, can it make a room explode? It's like fucking so it's not always running around and screaming. Sometimes it is, if it calls for it. Right. But how does how do you work on your performance? Oh, you working? have to give yourself uh Pavlock. <laughs> you have to Pavlock yourself, basically. You have to do things that Chris set up a microphone and mirrors in his house before bring the pain so he could do it yeah for himself uh Burr picks a different thing every special that he wants to do that sometimes is writing sometimes is performing you have to that's a real outside in thing where you have to go what am I not doing enough of right. let me do that Seinfeld is on Tim Ferriss's podcast this week I guess it was last week and it's the best, one of the best interviews he's ever done. Cause he really fucking gets into his process and yeah. not, I told him like, you're, I referred to Simon one time and kind of didn't hurt his feelings, but I go, you're Derek Jeter. You've been around so long. I don't even know if you're good. <laughs> I just I know that, no, no, no. But my point was you're Tom Brady. Is Tom Brady a great quarterback? I don't I fucking even he know. He's famous, he, but like, where is he on the thing? That's what Seinfeld is. So Seinfeld's so been around for so long, like his fame eclipses his everything yeah. else. All you know is he's like a staple. The problem is when you're so famous, people will laugh at you no matter what. Uh, to a point. To a point. Yeah. But I've seen people pop into the store, do In whatever. Seven minutes, yes. Do whatever. Dave's the exception. <laughs> Dave, Dave will sing the fucking yeah. Transformers theme song yeah. for 10 minutes and people yeah. are done Get a standing ovation. Uh, which I've seen. 
This yes. is very weird. I was like, what the hell? Um, but I do think there is a lot of leeway when you are so famous. Because people There's, are just like, he like, has it's to be funny. Somewhat, it's, sometimes that's true and sometimes it's not. Like, me and Seinfeld did spots one night at the improv. We both kind of ate it. And, and I got off and I was like, do you ever feel like you can't live up to your intro? And he goes, because I, I, like, whatever, I felt that about myself sometimes. And he's like, oh, yeah, I just thought that. <laughs> um, and he's like, but then I was like, no, get that. It's, it's fun. It's just the best. So, but he breaks everything down. And, and what I'm saying, and I told him, I was like, as imperious and superior as you are, you also fucking crush. So I hear a lot of younger comics shit on Jerry and it's like, really follow him. Yeah. Go somewhere and follow him and see how much you shit on him. See how like, see how tough you are when you're, when you're, uh, when you're thinking about your set and over, you can barely hear yourself think over the laughs he's getting and not with hacky stuff. Like good fucking quality bits. He became a better performer in the last, the, his last Netflix was like. What was that doc he did where he was started redoing from nothing? His, yeah, sorry, comedian. Comedian. Yeah. He was just called. He's great. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was good. Yeah, but you see him with a look of terror in his eyes before he goes on. <laughs> terror. Um, but the, so you gotta do both. Basically, if you can do both, you're, if you can do both, you're, um, hall of famer. If you can write incredibly well, you're, you gotta be able to, you gotta do it a lot. Like Tina is probably a better writer than performer. Right. Um, and she's known more as a writer. Uh, that's the thing that I have to deal with is like, all right, how do we, <laughs> let's just spruce it up a little bit there, buddy. Like I can write the jokes, obviously. It's like, well, what, so get to the people that write, that right. you write for. That's embarrassing. <laughs> it's look, I'm a, I'm, I have my own. You don't know what I'm carrying. <laughs> Goodbye. You've got mail. Hi, Neil and Bianca Donk Donk. LSCNR uh, writing nice. in for the first time. My friend's brother has a half dozen kids. He's Mormon. He and his wife went to Africa a while ago to dig a well or build huts or something charitable like that. Build huts is a little racist. <laughs> uh, anyhow, they figured uh, that the best way to really help would be to adopt a kid and bring him back to being American. Now they have five white kids and the one adopted black son. There's something that's been kind of bugging me and I wanted to ask your opinion. For Halloween, they dress their black son up as Mr. T. Um, they posted pics. Bianca's shaking her head. They posted pics and videos of him in costume saying, I pity the fool. Another year, they dressed him up as Samuel L. Jackson and made videos of, of him saying what, of him saying, say what again. Um, the other kids dress up as Disney princesses, Captain America, a fireman, Minecraft characters, etc. So my question is, is this racist or am I being an asshole for thinking that they are? Um... It seems messed up because I can't believe that these costumes were the son's idea. I don't think kids his age have ever heard of Mr. D, let alone ha like him enough to want to dress up like him. I also doubt the young kids are watching Pulp Fiction idolizing Jules Winfield. Uh, his parents are dressing him up as stereotypes and not even positive ones. He could have been Obama, MLK, and even uh, Black Panther if we're doing superheroes. But instead of a powerful black role model, they dress him up as someone with a funny catchphrase. Uh, is their behavior shitty, shitty as I think it, it is? Uh, I'm curious to know what you guys think. Dude, I'm so sad that's real. It well, I could have been worse. He could have the white kids dress up like like Mr. T. I actually, that is kind of funny. <laughs> In blackface? Wouldn't no, be that funny. No, no, who said blackface? But what I'm saying is... <laughs> you can dress there's up... There's a bad... There's a, there's a worse version. White Mr. T is not anything. I'm just saying you can dress up as a black person without blackface. Believe it or not. White jewels you know? is not anything. But who? It's fucking Halloween. I mean, I, yes. Like, it doesn't again, matter. We're applying people rules. This so is like, a well, penis. Technically, people dress up as penises. Yeah. Ovaries, testes. Uh, no, I think you can be. I think there's a way. It's preferable 
If you're going to dress up as a black I believe person. if they dress up as a penis, it is racially correct. <laughs> no white person, black no person. black guys dressing up like a white dick. <laughs> no, that'd be funny though. That's a tiny, funny. like tiny, just really tiny, tiny. curve. <laughs> um, uh, just uh, I don't know. I don't. That's it's racist technically. It's just more ignorant, and just like guys, it's just like it's like he's a accessory. Even though people do dress kids up and make them say cutesy things and so we can all laugh. So that is that is just a thing, regardless of race. Yeah. Uh, but That's why I'm kind of like, I can't, this may be above my pay grade. I don't, and I don't say that. Um, I do I don't think, think I've ever said that. I know, you've never I said that. I can't say. I do think, though, that's, that might not be the greatest thing to do to the kid. He's already... I'm assuming they're in Utah. Mormon? Well, LDS. They're somewhere, yeah. they're somewhere in a white community. Yes. I don't know. At some point, he's going to get othered and feel like, damn, I'm the only black kid in this situation or Probably, that situation. Yeah, I, I bet that's happened already. Let's assume it's happened, but maybe I don't know at how. The maybe at airport when they brought him back. <laughs> uh, but something, I mean, he seems young. So let's just say it's, uh, is this five? Yeah. Yeah. So let's just say something in the future where he does actually remember it. I, I don't know. You do think back and wonder, oh, that was a little ra Like, it's not an act. I mean, thing, I was a know? bum every year. And by bum, yeah. I would call myself a bum. Right. And I would put coal on my face because bums are dirty. Right. <laughs> hobo, bum. I, it was never a homeless word. It was all hobo or bum. Yeah, hobo. It was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I don't know. It just feels a little maybe tone deaf. I wonder... I yeah, I think I, you're slicing I, it thin here. I don't really. I think it should be up to the kid what he wants to be. He's five, he's right? But I don't. Shit. I think I don't think that they're assigning the white kids costumes. No, of course they're of course they're assigning him Mr. T. Yes. So what so, I'm saying is, let him decide what he wants to be. Right. But well, how am I? Slicing but he's got to be a black person. He cannot be a white character. <laughs> Wait. How am I slicing? That's it my thin? only rule. Uh, because I don't feel like I'm taking some huge it's, no, no, I don't. I think this. I'm just. I, I think the issue to me the big issue is let him decide what he wants to what what he wants to be. Um and then that's on the one hand. And then the other hand, I think, eh, they adopted the kid, let him have some fun. I'm kidding. Uh and then on the other thing, I think uh, it's costume slavery. <laughs> I do I do think this writer should bring it up. Be like, it's a little it's interesting. You're like, don't scold, but just I would I would have questions. I was around. Well, like, yeah, I would I, I would give him one of those like, hey, walk me through your psychology here. <laughs> hey, just I was just thinking. Great costume idea. Right. Walk me Hilarious. through it. Uh, <laughs> a walk me through it would be really good. I had a a good thought that I don't know what to do with. Tell us your good thought. Um there uh there's a there's this podcast called intelligence squared which is mm. great fucking awesome it's just two it's teams debating issues oh, cool. and you have to and then they take they ask the audience beforehand and then they ask them after the argument whose side they're on right and whoever converts the most people is the winner anyhow because of covid they do them that are they, they don't do the voting part but it was eric michael dyson and uh or michael eric dyson eric michael Michael Eric and um and uh John I want to say Wart it's a another black intellectual who people think is more uh conservative um John McWhorter um he's not he's just a old school liberal but Eric Michael Dyson brought up a thing Beyonce said which is um People, Beyonce apparently said when you bring up racism, when you're against racism, people think you're, when you challenge racism, people think you're challenging America. Right. Right. But I, which made me think that black people especially are in a relationship with an abusive narcissist. <laughs> what America. And I would say it's codependent, but it's like they fucking can't go anywhere. Mm. So how do you, how do you deal with a abusive narcissist? And then I was like, 
maybe a compliment sandwich would work where you go like america you're great stop hitting me but you're amazing <laughs> So that's my, I don't know how to, how to roll that out right. to large, like, but it is, that's what it is. It is, you can't only, you can't criticize America. You can't criticize white America directly. And they're far too fragile. Yeah. You have to be like, look, everybody knows it's the best country on earth. Right. And given my, I would, this is, a, if I have to be oppressed, this is the place. <laughs> Had one thought. <laughs> Don't kill me. You can. I get it. You can kill me. Try not to. Don't ever change. Yeah. it's That's kind of what of why, and I don't know how you do that policy-wise. That's what I was saying last week about persuasion and like Martin Luther King going like, I had a dream. Right. Hey, just a dream. It has and to you be pointed so out yes. that he was murdered, which is true. What I wish I'd pointed out was, but he also got the Voting Rights pa Act passed and the Civil Rights Bill passed. He got a ton of shit passed. So Martin Luther King and the Mountain Top. <laughs> they're both true. Do you know what I mean? No, like, of course. I understand why there was a divide between him and, you know, Malcolm X's style. And this yeah. kind of there, there was a divide of how to go about this thing that no one knows how to go about, yes. you know. Um, but. I I do think you fatigue on the play nice after a while. You're just like Oh, of course. Okay. So just of course shoot I said everyone. to somebody yesterday. Just yeah. shoot him. Frederick Douglass had to just go around for ten years talking about how slavery was wrong before they were finally in the eighteen fifties. So this is before any he what he escaped and basically became like a comic. More or less, he was just yeah, on the road. Yeah, he just did the road, road and, gigs. Uh, and uh, like I was saying last week, a lot of uh, America is like, I can't believe I have to say this. A lot of social change is, I can't believe I have to say this. And it's, as someone who has to deal with very little actual oppression, but someone who wants people to like have less kids, eat le less meat and shit like that, I can't believe I have to say Hey, man, you know, it's bad for the, you know, this is, we're raising the temperature of the air, then we're suffocating ourselves, right? It's exhausting. It's the fact that I have to say that and that it's controversial is so fucking insane. Yeah. And, but I can't be like, fuck you. You can't, you can't start biting people and burn the house down. <laughs> so I don't know how we got there. I say put the kid next year. In a, uh, I think if you're gonna go out as a black icon, do it big, and go out as uh, goodbye. Tyrone Biggums, the crackhead. <laughs> You've got mail. LSTNER. My wife nice. and I have been together off and on it since we were 20. We're 40 now. When we met, we were just kids who partied and did drugs together, and had silly goose times. Remember that? Yay. Um, we've obviously changed over the years after someone died a few years ago. My wife went deep into new age spirituality, all of it, crystals, energy work, Spirit astrology, <laughs> fucking kill me, the whole shit and shaboodle. I'm a, I'm an agnostic skeptic who finds all that stuff incredibly cringy and ridiculous, if not an outright scam. And I have a hard time keeping that opinion of myself if it comes up. We've gotten in some pretty big fights about it because, uh, despite her being an otherwise smart and successful woman, I have... A hard time respecting her opinions due to some of the beliefs that inform them. She can give me good advice and then ruin them by tying it to where Jupiter is at the moment or whatever the fuck. <laughs> uh, we did ayahuasca together. Who, uh, again, the best. I don't know. That should have solved all your problems. And while I did have a profound personal experience myself, none of this dynamic has really changed in the interim. We get along okay day to day, but I can't help but wonder if she'd be happier with someone who connects more on that specific kind of level. We have kids and are pretty financially dependent on each other. So just waking, uh, so just walking over this away. So just walking away, away. over this seems improbable. Uh, what are your thoughts on surviving in a cross spiritual relationship? Sometimes feel like a Bernie bro married into MAGA. How can I good ideas on both sides? Something I mostly see as nonsense. This is you. This is your <laughs> hill dog. <laughs> uh, all right, dog. Um, I would say 
Is there a way to actively agree on not talking about that shit? Like, can we compartmentalize it out? Because it's like religion almost. Like, we could not talk about religion. All my grandmothers are religious. Yeah. Some of my family's religious. Never do we ever talk about God. So I wonder if we could keep, like, feed the bonds that we do have and just really kind of not talk about it, you know? Is there a way? Could you be in a relationship with someone that, let's just make it, like a QAnon. But no, that's actually really fucked up. It's something less, something right, l more but, innocuous. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're all, they all get, if they're innocuous, they're not a problem. Well, crystals and shit is innocuous. But, I mean, but to his point, if she has good advice and then you hear what her logic is, you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. If someone does, gets on a calculator and goes six and then they tell you, it's, you know, 12. Yeah. And, and, and then they go six plus six is 12. How'd you find that out? I prayed. It's like, <laughs> you'd be like, oh, fuck. I'm not, no, we can't. I mean, I don't, I, I wouldn't, I think the just the firewall. Yeah, just don't talk about it. Yeah. I don't care how you got to that answer. Don't, don't show, show your work. work. Yes. <laughs> Do not show your work or yes. you fail. Yes. Keep it in your pants. I Keep think you just have to accept that you guys fundamentally disagree. Yeah. The problem is when, and I had this with a friend who kept sending me pandemic and all this Bill Gates of hell shit. And I just said, look, man, don't send me this. I, I don't want to talk about this. But she kept sending me it and I spazzed out. I was like, we fundament I fundamentally disagree with everything you've sent me. I've yeah. read it all. I researched it all. I respect you enough to research it. It is nonsense. I've asked you to stop. You have to stop or else I'm going to start looking at you different. You know, just stop. I can get past this, but just fuck off with this shit. And then it was fine. How'd she take it? Well, she the reason what set me off, she sent me a Candace Owens clip. And she was like, she's actually, you probably she don't like actually, her, but she's a badass. And I was like. She's a bad bitch. And she is, this person is of the uh, Caucasian, Poor. the Caucasus Islands. And so I was like, dude, fuck off. Like, I cannot stop. Stop. I, and I think the problem is. She's a is, person with white skin and ovaries. <laughs> she's a person with ovaries. <laughs> um, I. What I realized is that she actually wanted to somehow convince me because she respected me. And she was like, I just, I respect your opinion. Yeah. And I agree with a lot of what you say. And the fact, I think the what the meat and potatoes is, you aren't agreeing with this thing I believe in. Yeah. So I kind of Which really- is a problem. Want, that's a problem I for need, me. I need this. Sign the contract. Yeah. And so I wonder if they can understand that they just disagree or it's like, a thorn in maybe her side that he's just like scoffs at this shit. You know, I wonder if they can firewall it. I got, you got to firewall it. You just Regardless, have to. Yeah. And you, if crystals, get them out or put them on the roof. Just give First her, of all, give you her are, a woman. Kid. You are a spirit I've, padre. I'm a padre. So where are you in this? I'm a padre for, I am a person with white skin. With testes. Testes. And, Padre and a Padre coat. <laughs> a Padre, uh, a padre a shawl. hat. A Padre poncho is what I have. Um, a ponch tray. I don't know what no. the fuck I'm talking what, about. So what, if you were dating this woman, what would you be down uh, with? What would you not I, be down I've with? had a similar experience and I can't. It's just at a certain point you're like, I don't. Even even I've, I've dated a woman who was super into Bernie and it just got to the point where I was like, I think you're naive about what's possible. Yeah. I don't think that what you're what you want is wrong. No, yeah. I just sure. think that the idea that it's gonna happen in America in the next generation is uh, silly. And once that happens, it doesn't like end it, but it's you just kinda like I, I don't know what to do. What what do you want me to do? I I just think you're really wrong, and you if you dedicate time to it, I think it's silly. Um, I'm a spirit. I'm a skeptical. I'm a spirit padre who's. I'm a skeptical. Padre. Do you like uh, are you skeptical? Padre? Um, are you into crystals? 
No, I think the idea of crystals is uh, bananas. It's plantains. It's beyond bananas. <laughs> plantains. It's a step past. Platinum Maduro. It's platinum. Platinum Verde. Uh, um, it's, you know what's crazy though? I'm not into crystals, but my friend has this mat from Japan and it's a bunch of crushed up amethyst. <laughs> any, You're any, into crystals. I'm not into crystals at all. Yeah. At all. I, okay. It's rocks. I don't Sounds, get so it. Right now. No, no, no. I, I, I pulled some people that were. Listen, and they you got to listen. I think she's into they crystals. They got to listen. They got to listen. So. Study. <laughs> um, so I was, I was really feeling terrible. I was getting sick. He was like, come lay on my crystal mat and you'll feel better. And I was like, dude, no chance. Like, it's just, I yeah. know when I'm getting sick. I never also, get sick. Also, that's the. Such a he's he wants to fuck you. No, and no, he didn't want to fuck me. Yeah. He, he, Come lay, you know I got a crystal, ball, he didn't and I don't to offer it to a lot of people. <laughs> he didn't want to fuck me. Anyways, so I laid in his crystal mat. Not sick. Well, then, it, then there it is. So then there it is. I did a study. I polled some people too. That's it. They're all named Binkertons. Empirical what? <laughs> Goodbye. You've got um, mail. Hey, Neil and Banks, where do you guys stand with? People calling their significant others partners versus girlfriend slash boyfriend. I'm personally on the fence with it, though I've recently changed that to a non-monogamous relationship style. Uh, I've changed to a non-monogamous relationship style and tend to date two women at a time. I bet this Whoa, guy has what? a crystal mat. Um, I <laughs> like the to... term partner because for some reason saying my girlfriend feels singular. Girlfriends for some reason sounds misogynistic, but partners works for me in this case. It's intriguing what? to me when a monog when monogamous people use it, but I do hear it more often. Um, uh, would you care if you had a significant other who wanted to use that terminology? How many laughs? What banks the tanks? I don't. I think girlfriend and boyfriend is of incredibly corny. <laughs> I think it's so corny. It's like, I just picture like that picture of like people walking down the street with their hand in each other's <laughs> jean pocket butt slot. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, this is, this is my girlfriend. This is my I'm guy. with her. Yeah. He's with me. I, I think it's just not for adults. But it's the name. But I mean, whatever. I, it's what's happening, but that. Do you say it's my girlfriend? Yeah. Yes. Do you say that's my babe? No. <laughs> I don't, but I don't like, I, I partner's better. Ugh, I don't like any, I really don't like to say girl, boyfriend. I know, but that's because it's so corny. So fucking cringe. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's the word. Then again, when I live, when I, if I speak other language, if I'm speaking another language, I just, whatever, it's the term. Like in German, you just say friend. So that's my friend. Mm. You, but they conjugate for girl and boy. But it's like, oh, yeah, that's my friend. You just have to use it correctly. But it's the same word. So I don't know. But girlfriend, I don't like saying boyfriend, though. It feels like I'm 15. Yeah, it feels like you work for. It just feels like a Dang weird indenture. Yeah, feels like. But I'm weird. So I think a lot of people do like saying boyfriend. I, I'm weird. I don't like I'm commitment phobic. So I don't love it. But I don't. I don't. Use me I don't. Judge. I don't like it. Uh, not only do I not like it, but I don't even like it. Partner uh, sounds gay to me, so I sound like a lesbian if I'm like. Yeah, I'm but with if, my they're, partner. if they're if they're a person with ovaries, and you're a person with testes, and you call them your partner, it's like, do you then, guys have a law firm? I don't. Well, like no, it. that's what you run against. But it's better than boyfriend. Partner. Yes, yeah, my partner. <laughs> How about partner? This is my partner. Partner, partner. partner. This is my partner. What partner. a partner. Um, yeah, I'd say girlfriend and boyfriend hopefully will end in my lifetime. That's What one should of we the call them? Partner. 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 Padma. Padma Lakshmi. Padma Lakshmi. Um, follows me on Twitter. Would love to. Wow. Would love to. What? Would you love to, to do? Goodbye. I have a meal with her. Oh. Is she cooking? Lay on my crystal mat. <laughs> You've got hey, mail. Banks, RS, hey, Neil and Banks. RST and LE. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. hello, Neil and Bianca. I don't know what the... That's funny. Why did he for, do I don't that? know why that's funny. funny. That's funny. I really do not like how my voice sounds recorded, uh, but I had a question, discussion to submit. 
I want to preface the fact that I'm not actively thinking sexually of Neil nor attracted like that. Why say Rude. this? Neil's this is what I, hurt. girls are such dicks. <laughs> You're Why a dick say this? too, come on. I'm a dick, but I wouldn't, I, this is so unnecessary. Neil, no, you've done no. this too. Okay, no, okay. <laughs> uh, I had a random dream. I had a random dream that you and a couple comedians were hanging out uh, watching a movie with other friends and I was there. It would never happen. I know you approached me to have a sex contract, <laughs> including two other comedians. And I said, I'm not interested in the other two, but I'd consider a contract with you. Alarm went off, woke up, didn't get to play it out. So with that in mind, would you have create sex contracts with people? Bianca, same. I honestly thought not a bad option or a thing to do. Uh, you seem to be very black and white about everything else, so maybe. I mean... He's already said he would. First of all, co-wrote a sketch called Love Contract. <laughs> I'm 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, want to schedule it. Want minimums. Ugh. I want questionnaires. I hate it. I want to systematize it. You do. You do. And um, this is also kind of what you thought was happening when we were on ayahuasca, where you thought, that, yeah, I was like, this is like my we're ayahuasca. Rock, we're trying to set up a contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you talk to these bitches about a contract. We need to make it official with these bitches. Um, that's what I mean when I say I want to make it official. They go, marry me? I go, no, I want to set up a sex contract. So you do like contracts. I like, I between, think. Which that, a marriage is a contract. Yes, okay. I think that in some ways. People, there's a part of me that thinks people will be better off dating for six months and then that's the end no matter what. What? Why? That's, that's just so what I think. Weird. It is very weird. What if you weird. like it? Then. You re-up? You wait a year. What? You Why? wait a year. For what reason? See if, you get, see if it sticks. Neliophilia? Okay. See if it sticks. Because I that's have a romantic think, movie I have shit. to think Come that on. a lot of, I think a lot of marriages are you have this magical feeling with somebody and then it dissipates, but you get married because you're like, but we had the feeling. It's like <laughs> we were on, we both got a ring together. Living off steam. Yeah, you're going off steam and it's like we went to, it's like we won a championship. So I, I got to be friends. I got to stay friends with him or her because mm. like we have, we had a magical thing for one moment. <laughs> you're just trying to commemorate this feeling you used to have. Impossible. Love. Impossible. <laughs> okay, Neil. They did that, Donnie. Okay. Um, so yes, contract. Yes, systematized. Yes to six month marriages. Marriage no, no, is no, no, no. nothing more than um, uh, uh, sentimentality uh, of bygone times. Goodbye. Yo, <laughs> you've got mail. Your weed talk is so cringy. Oh God, Listen hilarious. to you talk about how hooping and weed don't mix sounds so hollow. Been hooping since I was a kid. Been hooping and smoking for 10 plus years. Smoked before and after. It's no biggie. You heard Blake say it wasn't a big deal. Just take the L and accept that it works for some. Basketball moves at a fast pace and yet you need to slow down and play in control without overthinking. Otherwise, you look like Russell Westbrook out there whipping shots off the glass. Weed helps. Also, I doubt the hoopers who smoke and hoop get as high as you. Wait. Consistency breeds a higher tolerance. Neil Plus, smoking <laughs> after hooping is the MF best. Not to mention, it's a much better method for recovery compared to the opioids provided for most athletes. Provided for most athletes. But I'm a rando that you have no reason to trust. You, you said it, bud. Uh, you should check out all the smoke podcasts if you hadn't, especially the Al Harrington episode. Sorry for the long letter. FYI, it was longer. Been hate listening since day one. Talk about cringy. Yeah. All right. Hooping. Uh, okay. Hooping. Uh, okay. So this is so his example of why hooping is good hooping. for you is <laughs> Al Harrington. Who? Who's what? Exactly. Okay. Al Harrington, who maybe almost was an alternate on the All Star team once, uh, versus if you don't smoke weed, you're going to be Russell Westbrook, the last guy to average a triple double two seasons in a row. So his examples are over What's here, Al Harrington, and over he over here, uh, 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 Russell Westbrook, a Hall of Famer. Um, and he's saying that Ooh, he's cute. That, yeah, uh, he's rich too. Uh, oh, he got hey. the Blake. Hey, line. Russell. So so Russell Westbrook is uh, is his example of why you shouldn't smoke weed. 
Um, um, and I took an L, apparently. I have a question. Who says hooping? He, people say. They're like, I'm, yeah. I'm hooping today. Yeah. Later, I'm hooping. Mm -hmm. Still? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds so like 90s Sprite commercial. I mean, there's just not a lot of... You're not wrong, but, you know. Hooping. It's what... Just um, trying to hoop. Uh... uh um, so, so you don't the, so like Al Harrington guy. is an example of a guy that you should smoke weed apparently and if you're Al Harrington you can average what did Al Harrington average there Will? 6'9 um, uh, god damn they're all monsters 13.5 oh. points a game you can average if you're Al Harrington now type in Russell Westbrook career average uh, you can average uh, career uh, you can average uh, 23 points a game. So that's a 10 point difference from what I can tell. Oh, wow. Um, and by the way, Russell Westbrook, his it, whatever, that's because he, his first two seasons didn't score enough. Um, so this guy, apparently I took an L by saying that you should smoke. The only difference, the only uh, uh, evolution I've had on this is if you, another guy, Suggested Seth uh, Seth Rogen smokes all the time and is it what? Then he's great. Okay, but how would he be if he didn't? Like you don't know how Al Harrington would be if he didn't smoke. But weed. also, Rogen didn't smoke weed for a very long time. Like, absolutely yeah. didn't smoke weed, and then he smoked. So it's like I don't know. This is right, not, but I don't. The, it's it, not even. Yeah, it's like I know. He's been great. It, it's 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 in general is it good or i don't i would prefer a league where everyone's not high again i think even this guy would say that i don't know so if that am I, I don't think he'd L? say that am i actively taking an l um I, what i have come around to is a buddy of mine who i'm i think we should have on the show named carl hart who carl. has a book coming out uh called drug use for adults um he he basically advocates that adults should use drugs. And and the weed test is people that don't smoke weed, if they smoke weed, can't do shit. People that do that are habitual users, which is what this guy's getting at, don't uh their skills don't uh depreciate in the thing that they're doing. So Again, I don't think LeBron. Again, I don't think any Hall of Famer in the NBA has regularly smoked weed. Would they have been better? I would argue probably not, but who knows? Uh, I again, that's me taking an L. Um, Neil, just take the L. And okay. uh, and so so Carl Hart's book. Okay. He says, "I do heroin sometimes. Whoa. I do cocaine sometimes, and I do Molly sometimes. Here's the rub." He is a, he's a black man and he's the head of the, the uh, neuropsychology department at Columbia University. Wow. I literally read it like, holy shit. What is he getting from that? What is he getting he, from What that? he's saying is he's advocating just, well, his name's Carl Hart. <laughs> the book's not out yet. Um, he's cute. Is he oh, cute he's for cute. you? Yeah. Hey, Carl. Um. So, I don't love dr I don't love dreads though, you know. Yeah, I hear you. Uh drug use for grown-ups coming out January 12th. So he's saying that there's so much misinformation that you can't even we don't even really know what we know what drugs are like in a like fentanyl's been around since 1960. Yeah. The problem is combinations. Uh most heroin overdoses are because of uh, another uh, is a lot of it's alcohol um, and there are things that uh, deplete your lung ca not capacity but your lung function there, that's that can be a side effect for certain people if it is then don't do the fucking drug like uh, or if you have a bad heart if you have they we don't take into consideration comorbidities for what or or uh coincidental use of another drug or alcohol or whatever when we hear stories of people dying but what is he getting from doing heroin he's getting he's it's fucking euphoric okay and so it's just he that. doesn't get addicted he in his first book he does studies with crack he literally columbia did studies with weed with crack crack or yes, cocaine crack come mm -hmm. in 
do crack. Is and that necessary crack? Yeah. It, why not? No, just keep, don't look at it. Never study what it does to people. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that there's just some like weed, cocaine, like crack is a mix of other substances. And I'm like, you know, crack I can understand. Crack is just a different cocaine recipe. Yeah, but uh, it's To me, it's is, the ultimate cocaine recipe. It's just. For the holidays. <laughs> no, it's. I just mean why, there's other What he's shit. saying is let's address these things like adults. They exist. It's a massive issue. We throw away billions of dollars a year. Uh, his, like, put in, uh, Will, 2019 heroin overdoses America. You got to walk yeah, through, guys. Yeah, Again, you, then step next thing you know, you're yelling step. about the set. Uh, okay. Opioid overdose rates. Rates. Thank you. Um, and... Uh, specific category. That one. Figure two on the right, Will. Click on the right. Thank you, buddy. Okay. So. Green. green. Yeah. Two, green is antidepressants. No, heroin. Okay. So heroin, 14,000 heroin overdoses. Now do heroin overdoses Portugal. Anyhow, according to Carl. Yeah. 60 heroin overdoses. What are they doing in, in Portugal? Portugal? It's legal. So in order to uh it just handle it like an adult, you know people are gonna do it. Give people an environment where they can do it. Weed's legal now. I still don't like weed. Right. It's this assumption that if something's legal, there's gonna be a stampede. Gambling's legal. Not a problem for me. Like and you say, what about the people it is a problem for? They need treatment. If they're if they find themselves in the in the system of a legal drug, um, so that's the only thing with weed is that it if you do if you do it regularly you will not have a depreciation. But the book, the shit he says in the book is like, wow, yeah, <laughs> like, and and he admitted it because he's like, I don't want to be a hypocrite, I don't want to be someone who on the outside is saying, I. Uh, that I believe that these things should be legal, but and that adults should be able to do them. The only the way I'll get it done is by just saying I do them, and I'm the head of neuropsychology or neurobiology. What's the name of the book again? Uh, Drug use for adults comes out January twelfth, or for grown ups. Um, hit, click that. Click that. Uh, there's a review in Discover Magazine, page turning science book. Anyhow, it's 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 crazy. Cool. And uh, he also points out that at festivals, they will in at British festivals they'll put basically like a a printout of a drug, like a a Molly pill, and um, what's in it if it's deadly, if it's any fentanyl, yeah, whatever like they they sort of- test it. But the problem is the cops test it. And they re- the way they get it is by confiscating it. In an, it so it's like, just Not fucking it. let's be adults about it. Right. And assume that people are going to do it anyway. And by being uh, opaque, you're just causing more deaths. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm not going to do heroin. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not interested in heroin. I mean, I am interested, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um. So it's it's fascinating. So that's again taken so many L's. So, Matt Barnes, Al Harrington, and uh, and whoever the other dude is, and uh, Matt Barnes, Al Harrington. Who's the other guy? And all the, no, no, the other guy in all the smoke. Too. They're not a good example of the league. Would not be that. They're like that's an advertisement for the big three. That's not an advertisement for the NBA. Anyhow. Goodbye. Uh, You've okay. got mail. Part one. I was initially going to get your thoughts and advice about dating people with mental health issues uh, uh, after a recent relationship I had with someone with an undiagnosed borderline personality disorder. It was the most crazy and intense thing I've ever experienced. And I'm now also convinced, smallpox blanket statement, whatever happened to that segment, uh, that, Small fox. that uh, all cult leaders suffer from some form of BPD as they got caught up in their shitstorm and tidal wave of emotions. Since then, uh, I've been wondering if, for me, any way 
being well versed in my own anxiety, depression, and OCD, uh, that to have any strong feelings towards someone, they need to have some kind of, for lack of a better description, brokenness. Whether it be BPD, anxiety, or other thoughts on dating people with known mental health issues, be it under control or work in progress, and how it affects things for you. Um, I thought, uh, part two, I thought today you should create a Tinder-esque dating app, albeit for people who've taken ayahuasca. No. No, hell no. Not enough money. <laughs> money. Uh, I mean, this guy's saying, should you date people with mental health issues? And he's also saying that, like, he doesn't, he but wonders But also, if, they're all cult leaders. <laughs> but he says he wonders if to have any strong feeling towards someone, they need to actually have some kind of uh, brokenness. Well, I think it's the thing we talked about there's before. Something there's, something, uh, there's something romantic about a red flag. Oh, yeah. There's something romantic about... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's some... That's... Then the question is, are red flags all mental health or some of them just weird weird <laughs> <laughs> uh, or just like man he likes to fuck it doesn't mean he has a or yeah it probably doesn't mean they have a mental health. it can or cannot whatever um i would also argue that cult leaders have just narcissistic personality disorder and not right. bpd bpd there's like a downside too which is you turn on people for no fucking reason for and no you think reason. everyone hates you yeah it's like the uh pedestal you know you yes pull, put people pedestalize or the other one yeah whatever um <laughs> um i i don't i don't want to say that you shouldn't date people with mental health disorders i would say that you're raising a level of difficulty for yourself and well not for them because they they're they're already they already have a high level of difficulty just know it's gonna be a high level of difficulty it's also gonna be more spectacular at points i bet going to be interesting. It's not going to be boring. Yes, it will be never boring. be boring. It will never be boring, but I think you need to once you've done it enough, you it's that starts fatiguing. It's like Well, it's repetitive it's like, as it's shit. Like, once you've dude. gone through the cycle of you hate me. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. You know what I thought about it and you're right, you don't hate me. And then a week later, you hate me. Okay, motherfucker. I cannot do this again. It's just all the, the, you're right, I'm being fucked up. Mm -hmm. No, the, the personal attacks, I'm so sorry for that. You're being manipulative. Attack. Yeah. Uh, you're by saying that I'm being mentally ill, that's my mental I've illness. I've had it's so many of the like, oh, you admitted that that one was you, that was kind of your fault. I thought about it. No. Yeah. That was your fault. Of course. Oh, okay. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's, I don't know, because then you're just like, well, are they total? Do they have more good than that? How problematic is there? It's like any, how manageable is the problem? Right. Um, I also, you know, try to give a good, ult, like not ultimatum, but a good, I can't do this if you're going to keep doing this at the beginning when they don't have a lot on you to spin in their head to be like, and she did this and then and then like just yeah i mean that that'll get you 10 days it's true <laughs> that'll get you 10 days of peace and then it's coming back it's they can't help it i mean even if they're in a tree i know people in treatment programs that will text me and be like why do you hate me are you serious okay so what do those people do they get treatment they get they stop smoking weed they they or they get on the right medicine they get off the wrong medicine they have a protocol that they need to follow and then they just get lazy mm. it, or or it just gets repetitive and they forget to do it and then next thing you know you fucking hate them um <laughs> sad yeah um this will be our yeah. final goodbye you've got mail oh this is well we'll do both of them you recently talked about the blind date era I'm from the blind date harem, you motherfucker. <laughs> and you got a lot. Uh, and actually, my why I met my wife of 20 years on a blind date. This got me thinking of a topic from the 1989 movie Sex Lies Videotape. Um, yes, another old reference. Directed by the great Steven Soderbergh. Maybe it's overrated. Maybe it's, maybe it's amazing. 
Um, in the in it, the characters talk about how men and women can instantly know if there's physical attraction to each other. However, the difference between the sexes is not as uh, is that as soon as a man sees a woman, he immediately knows he's physically attracted or not. Whereas women have the capacity to actually grow a physical attraction to a man once she gets to know much more about him, etc. With men. That doesn't seem to ever happen. So is it possible for a man to grow a physical attraction to a woman, even though he is not instantly attracted to her in the first place? In my blind date experiences, as soon as I met up with a woman at the bar or whatever, I immediately knew if this was going to be, uh, wor- if this is going to work from a physical attraction point of view. Whereas I've always gotten the sense from women that they need to more need more information about you to decide if they can become attracted to you. Um, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast. I believe... Hmm. when you meet someone from an app you ever like top gun when they land <laughs> they land the, they here. land the, you fucking they will not fucking <laughs> shut this movie down um they land on a on the aircraft carrier hmm. if they don't catch the thing they have to yeah. take off again i think you should be able to do that when you meet someone from an app you just be able like. to walk past them and go nope and keep walking <laughs> Um, oh that's so yeah and they can do it also (laughs) and that's then you fly back into the danger zone you get the fuck off the aircraft carrier and back in the danger zone i believe that uh the funny thing is with women when they learn to be attracted to you i this is i may have projected this but obviously what I, it's the full package for me. It's a lot of personality plus all this body. Give me the horse noise. Adi, 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 adi. Um, the when a girl and I have been in a fight and I'm like coming back from the bathroom for bed and I'm just in my underwear, I can see how gross they think I am. You know what I mean? Like if we're getting what? along, I'm cute. But if we're not getting along, it's like, like fucking ugh. ugh. Um, <laughs> I've never grown. But of course it is. But I, I'm probably not that wrong. Um, once you've grown, once a guy's grown on you, it's hard to re-see the gross. <laughs> when you're getting ready to break up with somebody? No, no. That's when it I mean, that's that's flushing. just what, I, that's what I'm talking about. It's like a big fight. A big, big fight. It's like. You're balding and your dick's whatever. Yeah. 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 Yes. Your dick's whatever. <laughs> what a damning set. What a your damning phrase. She didn't even bother with whatever. With with adjectives. It's just whatever. Um if you really want to hurt a guy's feeling. Just say your dick's whatever. Your dick's whatever. Um okay. I don't but you could never grow no. attraction. Never. No. No, no. What you, uh, well, she's so generous. No, 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 boing. It's not fucking no. going to boing me. Um, boing me. <laughs> what is funny when someone thinks they're hot based on one attribute? Mm, that'd be like, I know my hands are is together. Okay. And like you can just see be them pa- of being Mr. very T-boys. stereotypical. Mr. t Boy. Who knows? I pity the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what <laughs> I'm doing? You don't know if she's Latino or black. Okay. What tanks or blinks? Um, <laughs> uh, like I know, and meanwhile she's gross, but like she's just focusing on one part of herself and just staying tight well, on but herself. But the thing is, that's gross not, girls of course. get gross girls get dudes. Of course they do. Yeah, it's because that's just a that's a numbers game. The thing is, a guy can't grow attracted to a girl, but a guy's bar for attractive women is lower than women think. It's what bar? There's no bar. <laughs> just fucking, especially no. There's no bar. There's no. There's nothing. Right. Whereas Either it's just <laughs> available or not. Right. And then so a girl is like, everything is like a touching scene from like powder mm-hmm. or something. Just I have grown. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. Well, truly. it's another thing that you can watch and ha- watch happen to you. <laughs> yeah. It's a and I, a, a narrative about my feelings. Can you believe it? Uh, uh, my feelings, but cordon off into acts. Mm. Goodbye. You've got anyway. 
I've got a question probably more for Neil, but I always love Bianca's take on things. I've been married to a songwriter for going on 15 years, and recently he received an angry email from a past girlfriend of his regarding a song he has rewritten and put (laughs) out into the world. Uh, She she was really, really changed the locks angry that he had rewritten a song that was that was about her the funnier and perhaps psycho part of this was the song was actually not written about her at all but is about her sister yeah i know who i married a fucking dirtbag um there is no bar ladies there's no bar uh and the bar is open and i have a crystal mat um this opened up a funny conversation about all the wives girlfriends flings and made up sirens that have been immortalized in well-known songs how many girlfriends got pissed off because the ex inspired a song which turned out to be a bigger hit or it was a sexier song uh since i think a great joke is like a great song in many ways my questions are below have you ever had girlfriends get jealous over certain past jokes about an ex that pack a bigger punch in the laugh department or upset over new jokes that clearly have nothing to do with them but for the joke's sake, for the joke's sake, you say my girlfriend. Do you ever have to explain when getting into a relationship that whatever is said on a stage or written is going to be taken with a grain of salt? Thanks for the podcast, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, You've dated a comic, and uh, yeah, I didn't love that sort of thing. Um, I don't. I'm really. I don't like those kind of displays of sort of. I guess affection or may, sometimes in a comic, a comics case, they're making fun of you, but they, you know, they're talking about you. So whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, that's the thing that I've not heard. not always nice. That I don't, yeah, of course it's not nice. I don't think it's, it's ever never been, really nice. I mean, there's certain shit where. It's never been negative. Yeah. But it, I, it, leave me out of it. Leave me out. Leave me out. I've had an ex uh, have a, tattoo of me but not of me just of me of the podcast symbol- <laughs> the podcast one how neil feel with neil giant it was me, just me little um oh. <laughs> never forgive so uh ne- it was symbolically of me but it had a it had a part of my name in it and i did not like that at all we were dating and i was like Get stay away, man. Like no. Well, don't. that's that's dumb. That's just dumb. Of course, it's dumb. It's so stupid. I just I don't think I like any. Oh, another ex of mine. Um, his roommate writes for a very big musician, and uh, he and he has roommates. <laughs> Go ahead. This was before. Okay. And uh, he was his roommate. Then he got big, yeah. and he's a big writer. And he made a song based on like our arguments, me and his arguments. And he told me, he told my ex that, my ex told me that when we were exes and stuff. And I listened to the song. One, I didn't like the song. Two, all my friends I told absolutely did not believe me. Yeah. Well, they were just yeah. like, okay. Mm, yeah. So just, it always feels a bit egomaniac. You're never gonna, this is about me. Oh yeah, yeah. no, this is actually about me. And like, I don't like any of that. So I don't I I don't want any part of this. That's what I mean. I've had <laughs> you know what's funny is <laughs> I, uh, it's all mine are guys. Oh, that's I mean, so meaning, funny. <laughs> all right. Well, I dated a girl that I mentioned in three mics. I don't say who it is, but but she broke up with me basically. And then but she's one of my favorite singers ever. Yes. So listening to her album, knowing that she rejected me, is like some other, it's like a flip side of this that's like, it was, it was stupid of me to even listen to it. But like it, when you're, fla- when you're, when you're, la- when you're luxuriating in the pain. Okay. If she made a song, an album that was about your breakup, would you, how would you feel about that? Not saying she did. Uh, what is she? If it was insulting, I would have been insulted. But if it was like, let's just say it was about it. Yeah. Not. Uh, I wouldn't. That wouldn't bother me. But I have jokes up. Like I did a setup where I was like, my girlfriend's Asian, and then, then girls go like, "So are you mad that I'm not Asian?" 
That's yes. A and B. Asian girls are like, so it's because I'm Asian. Right. So it's like you fucking you've lost both. You you've lost everyone. It. Um, Wait, what are your guy stories? My guy stories are uh, a guy that I went to college with, and I had like a very. It wasn't even tumultuous. He was just a narcissist. And I said, you're a fucking narcissist. You said it in college? Yeah. And then cool. he wrote and I think was, yeah, he was in it, where he basically told the, our story, but he made himself me. He made himself the, 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 uh, sympathetic one it was a classic narcissist oh move. my god it was like a fucking classic narcissist move where it was like i couldn't when someone told me about he didn't even tell me about, i watched it and i was like oh <laughs> Wait. it was just it's so weird like dude you're a fucking maniac yeah um that's really but strange. it's just what a narcissist does well you know there's a very popular movie that i'm not going to say that is based on something a guy did to a girl and he rewrote it that the girl did it to him uh, of course that's so that actually did have me this one guy I dated was terrible he was terrible there's a lot of weird stuff i'll like spare you but he he just did a lot of weird creepy things when we were breaking up like he's like hey i got you flowers and then put them on my doorstep but it, he like clearly just smashed a bottle and put the flowers in it it was like broken glass everyone was like Okay, I don't uh, know what cool. that's all. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, very weird stuff. Um, then he sent me a link out of nowhere, and he's like, "Hey, this uh, this short uh, you inspired me with this yeah. short." Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was just this girl coming out of a movie. The that four had... scariest words in the English language. You inspired a short. <laughs> 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 and so it's him and this girl, and he's coming out of a movie. And she's like, God, that this the famous actor in it is so fucking hot. I would fuck this sh like she's just filthy mouth tirade about how badly she wanted to fuck the lead. And I remember one time I just happened to say a guy on TV is like, oh yeah, he's attractive. Yeah. No, couldn't handle the. That's how a guy hears that. Like I want to lick his balls. <laughs> and, yeah. So then, I mean, she looked so terrible. This character looked. Mm -hmm. She was such a fucking idiot rude obnoxious the whole thing and he was such a nice guy throughout the whole thing i think at the end she like falls off a cliff i was just like thank you yeah. why did you set why did you take time why do you to do scout this? locations for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah what yeah. i mean people are nutty. is that is that so you think that's a narcissistic thing i this the thing that i explained or just a vengeful dude. i'm gonna write down the movie that the thing okay. happened. Maybe it's but a, just it, a vengeful. The, What's uh, the, the difference movie between a narcissist and a vengeful dude? Just a a narcissist is the person who is is a villain and then reshoots it so that he's the victim of a villain. Mm. That's what a narcissist does. Whatever, whatever I need to do to win this thing. Come on, to top. explain Come to my top. yeah yeah. Um, wait, let me see. This is the the movie okay, it was this based is the on. The movie. The movie. <laughs> wow yeah. are you serious yeah um, i know the person who wrote that no you don't are not not i know you know who wrote it yeah the star wrote it oh this okay sorry yeah. i know someone who helped me yeah, yeah. wow yeah that's anyhow so, sorry sorry Rude. um Rude. but uh but the movie the thing that i was in i'll yeah, it's just so fucking weird. That's so funny. It do was you, just like do you it have was a clip? like uh, is there it a way was to like find uh, it was like oh, it was trigonometry for <laughs> fucking weird human manipulation. I was like, it was Spider Man. It was Spider Man. <laughs> Spider meme. It was fucking Spider Man. Um, um, and James Blake wrote a song based on my new show. That is great. Okay, that's nice. That's great, and that's I kind of asked friend. him. I kind of invited him to, like, hey, maybe if you want, here's my, here's the script for the new show, if you have it. Now, with him and James listens to the podcast, I may like a new song of his more for it. 
<laughs> okay. Same idea. It was though. free. No, I, it's very. The, the, the other one's gonna be free too. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just I. But there, it's like a coin toss between yeah. these two songs. Um, so yeah, so those are the songs written, or the songs and the jokes. But I, there are comics who talk about their wives that if I were their wives, I would punch them in the face. Well, I remember friend of the show. Uh, Rock used to talk about his now ex-wife in a way that was like, well, I think they have to fight now, right? Uh, so Kevin Hart's ex-wife has done some stand-up. She's been to the store a few times. Yeah. And I remember she said something. She's like, he made millions for years just like on me. Like I'm the material, which I was kind of like. Mm-hmm. And then she, anyways, it was just interesting how I think it does, regardless, just human nature. I think it does feel like that. It does feel like, hey, you used me. My, I was your subject matter. Yeah. But it isn't like that. They it's, don't, not, it's hard no, to gu- not hear that. So rarely does someone, a girl, say something that will become a joke. Right. It's, it's more there's just a like morphology a to categorical yeah, 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 exactly. behavior where you're like. Mm. Like it, someone had to make it funny. Yeah. Yeah. But I understand that it feels like that. It feels very much like you made millions same. Yeah, but I even like if Dave talks about like Dave does this joke about chip. People go, "Are you chip?" And I'd be like, "No, there's no fucking chip." <laughs> like it's Are just a chip? white scenario. Really so scenario with chip? a white person, it's not like, and it you're the only white person, <laughs> so you're it. Uh, people are simple. Is my point. Let's do it. We did it. We don't have to take that. There's shit here, and we don't have to take it. Nope. Goodbye. Goodbye. Happy holidays, everybody. Yeah. Yeah.